Johnson City Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities because we make buying simple. First, we discount every vehicle every day, and we stand behind what we sell with a lifetime warranty. For more, simply go to johnsoncitytoyota.com. Family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love. Even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls. All the ingredients for family. So, you know, I'd like to see him get some hang time on some punts, make them fair catch it, and you just, you know, don't, don't put it in a position where you see a guy running down the field and, and chasing after him because that's not fun. Defensively for this Pioneer team, you know, they were great last week against just about everything that there, there possibly was. So I, I'm going to go out. For Shawan, what they were able to do successfully against Mars Hill was throw the football, and I guess it's because Mars Hill stopped the run. So – Let's see if Shawan can actually run the football today. So let's eliminate the pass. I think our secondary is very good. Uh, you know, let's pick off some passes today. I, I don't know that we need to do that, but let's just tight coverage, no person, no fouls. We, you know, we had a couple of penalties last week uh, in, in some pass interference. Jermaine Witherspoon is going to be a big miss for mm -hmm. that for the uh, secondary. So I think my key today is if we're able to limit their very good wide receivers because they had a very good day last Thursday against this uh, against the Mars Hill team. Um, and again, maybe the most athletic part of Mars Hill's team, which is their secondary. So I think today uh, the challenge for us is to uh, force them to have to run the football. My, my key to the game today is to make Bryce Witt make some mistakes because if you look at his career statistics, coming into this season he had played 30 career games and he had thrown 35 interceptions. So... I, my key is let's pick them off a couple times. Let's flip the field. Let's get let's get a, a pick and, and a good return and put some pressure where the defensive line get the pressure, make him make a bad decision, make him make a bad throw, and and hopefully step in the way of somebody and, and pick one off or two. He he may be the all time leading passer in school history, but the good goes with the bad. He's also one of their worst passers as far as throwing it to the other team <laughs> as well. Offensively, uh, you know. Uh, I think the jury's still out on, on Ivan Corbin and what he can be at Tusculum. I think our running back game is good, and obviously our wide receivers are good. Today, for me, the key is allow Corbin, again, more freedom. So it falls on the offensive line. I think those guys were great last week. I felt like they, they controlled the line of scrimmage. They obviously opened up some holes. For me, it's don't allow these two big defensive linemen that they have to penetrate, to get stops behind the line of scrimmage, I think we have to gain positive yards each and every play. I don't care if we have to punt it on fourth down and mm -hmm. one. I don't want to have to punt on fourth down and 21 because we've been hit behind the line of scrimmage. I think a lot rests today on, on how strong our offensive line play can be. My key is get all the running backs involved. You know, Get Joe Million his carries, get Jackson his carries, get Kellum in there as well. I think if you keep the running backs rotated and fresh, I think you can wear them down. It's I mean, it's it's not going to be hot today. It's going to you know it's, it's it's sunny and we're going to be in the low 80s. You know, get them get their defensive line sucking a little wind while you have some fresh running backs out there. And I, I think that that that's for me that's my key offensively. So those are our keys. We'll hear from Jerry Odom what his keys will be when we come back right after this. Jim, as always, thanks. My See pleasure. you afterwards. Yeah. All right. Jim will be back after the contest here today at Pioneer Field, where we celebrate Patriots Day, where we commemorate the 20th anniversary of uh, one of the worst terrorist attacks ever on American soil, the 9-11 attack. So all of our first responders, military personnel, admitted into the game free today with their valid ID. So we, we, we will welcome you guys in today to Patriots Day. Pioneer Field, coming up next, it's Jerry Odom. That's when Pioneer Football continues on the Pioneer Sports Network. It's our favorite time of we the year, and all County, the teams Tennessee, are looking. Here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingles for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help, and we love what we do, and Ingles is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are, and it's in our blood. 
God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story. We are in Granger County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can, and then they push harder. Because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? I, I think you just wanted to come out and, and I would say mission accomplished. You had to do what you had to do and last week was saw a lot from your team maybe you weren't real sure you didn't know anything about them so you have to be pretty pleased about what you what the outcome came up came about we can play better but yeah I, mean, I think you like you said mission accomplished you got the W on the road you didn't really know what you're gonna get uh, had to just kind of go by your rules and what you saw but uh, yeah I, I think we learned some things um, got beat up a little bit not too bad got a couple guys I don't know if we'll play but for the most part, I think, uh, you know, got the job done, got the win, and then also got to, you know, figure out some things about what we do well and what we got to do better. You know, I like the offensive line. I thought they were just tremendous. And I know hopefully we see a lot more improvement from one to the next. But on the offensive side, I think Ivan was as efficient as he was. One, he had time. Right. Um, and two, he had a running game that was really good, led by those guys up front. Yeah, you know, I mean, Ivan hadn't played a lot of football in two years. And, you know, he's this first time he's really strapped it up and had a, had a game. So I think he was trying to be extra careful with the ball. He had one turnover, uh, but the rest of them were – I think it was one of those things where he took deep shots sometimes where he was not sure, but he didn't throw it to coverage. And yeah. So I think he'll get better at that as he gets more comfortable. But obviously the running game, getting uh, all the running backs going and the offensive line blocking pretty well, I think, you know, helped for sure. And you're a big defensive guy, obviously, and you're probably going to be most critical of them. But you know, got to be pleased with the way that defensive line just continued to apply pressure. Yeah, they, you know, we didn't play. You know, you look at it. We could have played better, obviously, uh, but but their effort was what was really outstanding. How fast they played, how hard they played. I think you know, like I said, there's some quality depth there. Um, we're hoping that we can, you know, the goal is to have guys play. If you know, if you're in an 85 play game, you know, 80 to 85 plays once. Your starters maybe 45, your next group 20, and then next group 15, so that you keep everybody fresh and keep them rolling through and try to build depth within that program, which we haven't really had a lot of here. Let's turn our attention to Shawan. It's a team that knocks off Mars Hill last week in overtime yeah. at Mars Hill. Uh, we know Jimmy Urzua, what he's, he's capable yeah. of as a quarterback and what they can bring out athletically, uh, Mars Hill. But Shawan hung with them, got that W. Um, not a pushover team. You know, maybe three or four years ago they were, but here's a team that hadn't played in, in two years that come out with the big win. Start offensively because they were efficient enough against the Mars Hill defense. Yeah, their, their quarterback is outstanding. Uh, big arm, kind of a Ben Roethlisberger guy. Uh, you know, really moves around well. A willing runner. I don't know how great a runner is, but a willing runner. Hard to bring down because obviously he's so big. 
Um, wide receiver wise, number one and number two are as good as we've played. I mean, they, they, you know, they're they're outstanding. Um, offensive line wise, they're younger, but they're solid. Um, and it's solid, really solid running back. Got a big banging kid, uh, I think 34, uh, is like a 215, 210 guy. And then they got another guy that's probably like 175, 180, kind of scat back type guy. So, you know, uh, really well coached. Uh, I think they do some nice things schematically. I think you see some triple high crossers and things like that, some quarter speeders and, and, and some different things like that. We've had to work awful hard on, you know, getting ready for those. They do take a long time to develop, so we've got to do a good job putting pressure on up front when we get that opportunity and understanding what they're trying to accomplish at each personnel group and, and try to, you know, figure that part out. You're going to see some motion stuff from them, some little, uh, I, I would say, trick plays and, and uh, you know, and, and different looking concepts um, that will have to be very, very disciplined not to give up something silly. Yeah. Um, but uh, we've worked hard this week, had a pretty good week of practice, and uh, I think they're ready to go. I think more impressively last week, the offense against St. Augs went up against a pretty good front line and linebacking core, not bad for a first game. See a totally different group of guys on that defense this yeah, week. Yeah, D-line wise, these guys are sporty. Uh, you got you got four guys in the defense men, six four two forty, really good football player. Uh, I believe he's out of New York, and then uh, they got a D tackle number three, that uh, six four two eighty five guy, that really gets off the ball well. Got a uh, transfer from Jacksonville University, plays nose for him. Uh, that does a really nice job. Got a good linebacker, the CIAA player of the week. Uh, I think they're younger in the back end. Um, you know, play a lot of one high concepts, rip Liz, a little bit of man. Uh, some void zone stuff, and you know, in the blitz game, but uh, they're uh, they're talented. I mean, they're a talented group. I think mean, this guy's done a really good job recruiting, and uh, I think it's a situation where we're gonna have to come out, and play our best in, in order to win the football game. And as you say, our best improvement from one game to the next. How about your coaching staff? Do you sense that even they have prepared a little bit better this week for this game? Well, I mean, we've prepared. Uh, you know, I mean, having some tape helps a little bit, at least one game. And we had nothing last week. I mean, that's the least prepared of any game I've ever gone into in my life. But I don't think they had a lot of tape on us either, evidently, because they weren't expecting a lot of stuff, and, and that I guess that we did. But at the end of the day, um, we've got a young coach staff, a lot of change on that. So, you know, us working together, getting better each week, understanding uh, ins and outs of how I call a game or how Kyle calls a game. I think that's a big part of it, uh, you know, with that. I mean, I, I can lean on Malik Slater, Malik Goodman on defense, and then Peyton Dixon, and, you know, has been here on the offensive side of the ball for, for Kyle. But, uh, you know, I think, yeah, I think we all get – We remember and mourn all those who died that fateful day and the days, months, and years to follow. But we remember and celebrate the courage and heroism shown that day by our firefighters, police officers, first responders, our military, and our fellow citizens. May we remember their sacrifice. Let us never forget. We ask that you please remain standing for today's invocation and our national anthem. Our invocation will be given today by Tusculum Assistant Athletic Director, Don Donald. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings you have given us, and thank you for the privilege of being here today as we watch these two teams play. We thank you for Tusculum University and Chawan University and their sacred mission in educating our sons and daughters. As we remember this historic day, 
and the many tragedies and losses which took place in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. Let us not forget the courage and self-sacrifice which followed. Let them continue to be an inspiration to us all. We remember all those who have died during this pandemic and those who are suffering today. We also remember our departed brothers and sisters, especially James Smith and former Tuscan assistant coach John Peacock. May your healing hands reach out to their families, O oh Lord, and bring comfort to them. And as always, Lord, please grant us peace and understanding in our country and in our world. We ask for these and all things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. in the 2021 home opener here today at Pioneer Field. It will be the inaugural gridiron encounter between the two programs, which were both victorious last week, as we've talked about and documented here through the uh, Pioneer kickoff show. Hello again, everyone. Brian State, now joined by Joe Bird. Glad to have Joe with us once again. A uh, Pioneer team that got up to a great start. And I know that uh, you read about it. You were uh, 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 keeping up with it in, in some ways. Somewhat of a whole new team than what we saw in the spring, and yet they come out and they still are able to accomplish some of the many things that they were doing in the spring. And that was dominance on the offensive side. What were some of maybe your takeaways uh, when you saw the score, number one, the way the Pioneers uh, battled in week number one? Well, I mean, exactly like you say, l last year that spring championship, you, they did have a great offense, but defense played a really big part in that, especially in that uh, win over Lenore Ryan in the championship game. But you look at last week's game against St. Augs, yeah, our defense still played great, held them to two touchdowns, but the 58 points that the Pioneers scored, <laughs> whenever you can do that, and especially you mentioned Maurice Chameleon, 
more, more than 100 yards, two touchdowns on only 12 carries. You do the math, it's a pretty good average for every time he touches the football. And what I think you're going to like to see are some of these other youngsters that are going to be out there. And, and Courtney Jackson's not a youngster. He's a transfer. He's here. I think you're going to like the way he runs the football. And uh, Kellum, he was fantastic last week as well in some action. Now, it's a totally different team in Shawan. Another thing that maybe you jumped out at you is that Shawan knocked off Mars Hill last week. Yeah, that game went to overtime. Uh, Shawan beating the Mars Hill Lions. So that should set up for a really good contest today. Once again, uh, conferences crossing over with each other from last week to this week all the way around. So it'll be a good matchup. Pioneers are 8-4 and four against the CIAA. We've been to some of those games. Elizabeth City State, Livingston. Um, uh, St. Paul's was an interesting uh, trip for, uh, for us. Virginia State was an interesting trip, but the most interesting of all of them was Winston-Salem State, I, I think, for the most part. Oh, uh, yeah, and that, that was really great. Uh, went to see uh, Pioneers play and beat Winston-Salem State, Bowman Gray Stadium there in Winston-Salem, where they also have a big racing series because they've got a racetrack around the football field. So, great place. I'd, I'd be happy to go back over there. And, you know, and it was also a, a team, Winston-Salem, that was getting ready to jump D1. So, uh, that was an impressive victory. Uh, for them. All right, so there's some faces out here that uh, people are getting to know. And, and I think what I like about Maurice Gamillion is the fact that he's been here for a while, and he just kind of plugs along and does what he does. You know, we lose T.J. Jones as a fantastic running back from the spring, and so you got Maurice Gamillion kind of stepping up there, and then you got Ivan Corbin stepping in, a guy that started his career at Limestone, hasn't played meaningful football for two years as a quarterback, that is, when he went to Georgia Southern, um, and he has to step in for a guy in Rogan Wells. And Phenomenal spring, phenomenal players to replace, and those two really had a, a, a really nice game last week. Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, completion percentage, 42%, 11 of uh, 26. We would like to see that get a little bit better, but he did have 190 yards passing and, and a touchdown to help the Pioneers in that win last week. You know, last week defensively, two touchdowns, and TU has standed for turnover university <laughs> since Jer Jerry Odom has been here. And we get two defensive scores last week, one of them from Raynell Killian, and then uh, one of them from Quahim Glasgow, set up by Nelson Luis. Nelson had a phenomenal game. His numbers aren't going to say it, but Raynell Killian definitely had a big game last week. And they've got big shoes to fill as well. For the first time in four years, we're not going to be announcing Ivan Hogan's as he has graduated and transferred to Georgia, West, uh, Western Carolina, sorry. And then Jackson Cawthon has basically graduated and moved on to start his professional career as a nurse anesthetist and finishing up schooling and doing that. So two names we haven't called, but Raynell Killian and Craig Watts in that linebacker core were big last yeah, year. I mean, the changeover from year to year, we, we've done this long enough. At this level, there's always a lot of turnover for various reasons, and uh, that's the nature of the beast. But what is the sign of a good program is if you can lose really good players like that but bring in more to fill their shoes as you start the new season. A Pioneer football team today that will be taking on Chawan. They are led by the school's all-time leading passer and Bryce Witt. Witt had 17 of 28 last week against Mars Hill, completed 61% of his passes. He's a big kid. Through for 231 yards. The school's all-time leading passer, touchdown guy, completion guy. He's also thrown 35 interceptions. I think today uh, the Pioneers uh, need to come out, establish that defensive front, put him under some pressure early, and see what they get. He's a big kid. So, uh, again, uh, it's a Pioneer football team that will be, um, I think, challenged today from this Shawan Hawks side. So, just being back, we're back in, we're in football. We've got three weeks here. It's just good to be back out on the football field. I mean, it absolutely is. You couldn't ask for better weather here. Beautiful. Uh, we do have some clouds off in the distance, but it's still a sunshiny, bright blue sky day. 74 degrees. We don't usually get to say that at this point in October or in September. I mean, we usually have to wait to October for this great football weather. But, I mean, today it's a wonderful day here. Uh, Sun shining at Pioneer Field, and we're getting ready to kick this thing off. We'll have kickoff coming up in just moments. This has been the Pioneer Kickoff Show coming up. Pioneers and the Hawks square off for the very first time as you listen to Pioneer Football here on the Pioneer Sports Network. Spot. And the Pioneers have won the toss and elected to receive the kickoff. The Hawks will defend the East end zone. Hi, <laughs> uh, and fans, here come you, Duxville University.
Pioneers, the Shawan Hawks, and we welcome you into Pioneer Field for the first of three consecutive games for this Pioneer football team today. That offensive line was very good last week. Andrew Theobald, Mike Pepin, Thomas Mahoney on that left side. On the right side, Tremaine Chapman and Ben Schellenbeck really stepped up along with Joe Locke. Wide receivers are outstanding. Justice Parham, Tyler Agero, and Derek Wright. Will Schellenbeck, the tight end. The running back is Maurice Gamillion, and the quarterback is Ivan Corbin. I think I was more impressed with the defensive line last week, just with some new names. You've got Jordan Smith, and you'll see Yousef Lee in that bandit position. Xavier Clemens and a kid named Day-Day White, DeJavon White. Uh, DeJavon played about 12 snaps and had two and a half sacks. Nelson Luis anchoring a defensive front with Kane DeShotters. Quaheen Glasgow a touchdown last week with Jamichael Wilson. And the linebackers, that's the biggest role to fill. Craig Watts, the Will, Jahad Russ, the Mike for the Pioneers. In the nickel, Kamari Lovett. The rover is Raynell Killian. He had a touchdown last week defensively. Jordan Taylor, a corner, and uh, Takorian Brown, a corner, and John Smith, the returning leading tackler for this Pioneer football team. Back in that secondary for the Pioneers against the Shawan Hawks who had a, a really good offensive uh, game last week against the Mars Hill Lions. We'll see if the Pioneers can uh, stamp it up, improve that what they need from game one to game two. Pioneer team that won the toss and they elected to receive and they will be receiving on the right side of your radio dial and it will be Derek Wright back deep with Maurice Gamillion. Getting set to put foot to leather for the Hawks will be Jude McCatney, a sophomore at a Derry Island and foot to leather, we're underway here from Pioneer Field. This will be Derek Wright running up onto it at the 11. Far side return at the 20, Wright 25-30 and taken down as he makes it to about the 32. Brought down by Jordan Brown, a freshman out of Fayette County, Georgia. And the Pioneer offense will have good field position to start the game. And here comes Ivan Corbin and this offensive front. As kind of a short kick by Shawan there. Uh, Wright had to come up and get it and actually had to reach to make the, make the grab, but did a good job of getting the Pioneers some excellent starting field position here today. From the 32, the Pioneers wear their all orange uniforms here at home. Shawan wearing their all white uniforms trimmed out in blue. So first and 10 as Corbin will come out out of the gun. Maurice Gamillion on his right shoulder. Lining up to the far sideline is going to be Justice Parham as the wide out. Maybe an, an illegal snap against the Pioneers on the very first play from scrimmage. I just think it got stuck in the grass. <laughs> it did. Uh, you mentioned this uniform. I realize right now down the road, Tennessee is playing Pitt. But honestly, what we're looking at, uniform combinations, if you want to picture it, it looks like Tennessee playing Penn State today. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So it's a uh, Pioneer football team here at home, and it's been a long time since they have been at home. Uh, they only played one home game last season. And so here they are, a team that, uh, or I should say last season, in the spring. And you even missed that one, so it's been a while, a while since you've been here at home. Uh, yeah, they played Easter last year. First down and 15. This will be a screen out of the backfield to Maurice Gamillion, and it might get maybe a yard on the play. And that's good pursuit by the uh, linebackers. And Basilo Fernandez, a sophomore out of Miami, coming up with that stop. It'll bring up second and 14 at the 28, maybe the 27. No, my last time uh, seeing a game here at Pioneer Field was actually in the fall of 2019. So yeah, it's been a while. Almost two years. So they say no gain on the play, as it looked as if Gamillion had uh, closer to the 30, but apparently his knee touched back at the 27. Second down and 15 for Tusculum, as Corbin will uh, display Shellen back the tight end as a wide out to the far sideline. Gamillion stays on the left shoulder of Corbin. The snap is back. Looking, Corbin is going to step up and has room to run, days to run, 35-40. Corbin to the 50. Corbin to the 40 and steps out of bounds at the Shawan 38-yard line. First and 10 for the Pioneers. Ivan Shoulder Corbin Corbin's didn't have that type of running back. room last week, Looking. but he took Corbin advantage is today. Corbin step uh, up and has room to run. Pioneers. Days to run. 35-40. Corbin, Corbin to the 50. Excellent Corbin to the 40 and, and steps out of bounds at the Shawan 38. Inside the Shawan territory. As the Tenskillum is going to go quickly, they get to the line of scrimmage. After snap, back, hold down, kick up, it's good. And the Pioneers add the point. Pioneers strike quickly. 13-15 to play here in the first half. Back after this, it's Tusculum 7, Shawan 0. As you listen to Pioneer Football on the Pioneer Sports Network.
the season for the Pioneers, and it was really – Ivan didn't show his ability to run the football the way he did last week, the way he did on the, the uh, second play today. Well, the two big plays there was the big uh, rush by Ivan Corbett and then the way he placed the ball in for the touchdown. The uh, kickoff for the Pioneers. Fielded at the 11-yard line for Shawan and belted at the 20 and up to the 22-yard line. On the return was Malik Tobias, and Tobias took a big hit right to the chest and goes down at the 22, maybe the 23. Either way, it'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers. Richard Gervail is a guy, All-American sprinter, set numerous records here at Tusculum, numerous regional records, and he comes up with the big stop. Hey, it was, it was a big hit. You, you had the ball carrier feel the ball over here near the numbers and try to go back inside mid middle of the field and he paid the price. So Tyreek McNeil is in the backfield with Bryce Witt, who works out of the gun in a spread formation, four wideouts, two left and two to the right. They'll bring a man in motion on the jet sweep and hand it off to him, and this is going to be the end around the Pioneers' good pursuit up to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. And on that end around is Imeek Watkins, the senior from Wilmington. He's a good player. And we had an injury very early last week with Jermaine Witherspoon going down, and we've got another injured player for the Pioneers. And again, we're a little bit, uh, with Witherspoon going down, you can ill afford to have anyone else in that secondary go down. I did not see what happened, Brian. It was on the far sideline behind all, everybody, so I, I really just don't know what, uh, what happened. So it's a uh, Pioneer, t and it looked like one of those situations where you're reaching out for this uh, player, for, uh, for the uh, corner. And again, it's just difficult to tell. I can't see right off the bat who that may be on that far side. Where it is not Ty Corey and Brown. It could be Jordan Taylor who is down on that far sideline. Actually, it's well, – actually, this is big. This would, this would be a, a big injury for this team, Raynell Killian. Uh, he is walking off under his own power now that they have gotten him up, so that is a good sign. Killian, who had the touchdown last week, led the team in tackles. It looked as if it was one of those things where you reach out and you get hit as you're trying to make the tackle a shoulder separation or something like that. But it doesn't appear as if they are too worried about that. He's coming off the field slowly, but he is coming off the field without any assistance. So it's going to bring up second down and seven from the 25 for the Hawks. McNeil is again in the backfield. You've got Watkins, the speedster, in the slot to the near sideline as they go left to right on your radio. And Tusculum forces a false start at that front line at Fort Tusculum. Again, they are big up front. Quaheem Glasgow moving up front, and that's just because Shawan moved first. So back him up five yards, make it a second down and 12. Now for the Hawks. Ball spotted on the 20-yard line. This will be Nelson Luis lined up to the left side, moving him on that defensive front. Sometimes we'll move him into the middle of the defensive front. He is just a load to handle. Bryce Witt to pass, back to pass, looking, looking. He's under some pressure by Jihad Rush. He'll throw it downfield. This pass will be complete across the 35 and up to the 36-yard line. The Pioneers just could not get there, even though they applied as much pressure as they could. Jihad Rush just couldn't get him, bring him down. The catch is made by Malik Tobias at the 35-yard line, moves the chain first and 10. Uh, that was just a good play by Witt. He kept his composure about him. Pioneers had him dead to rights, but he was able to complete the pass and pick up a first down. First and 10 at the 35 for the Hawks. Back to pass is going to be Witt throwing it back shoulder down the field. Pass will be incomplete, intended on that far sideline for the Hawks is going to be Samuel Dunn, a junior from Suffolk, Virginia. And that's incomplete, second and 10. Pioneers might have dodged a little bit of a bullet right there because in years past, that would have definitely been past interference against Tuscan. But as it is, Shawan's looking at second and 10. Jordan Taylor on that coverage out there. And uh, he'll line up on the right side. Ty Corey and Brown to the left side. Uh, two corners for the Pioneers. Witt in the gun. Now in the backfield behind him will be Miles Fairley. They'll bring a man in motion. That's Tobias, and this will be Witt. He'll keep it and uh, follow his running back into the hole, and he'll pick up maybe three, and it's going to bring up a third down and seven coming up. The wide out corner, Taylor, getting into it on that far sideline. Two officials, three officials had to come in and break that up, but it's a third down coming up for Shawan. And that's at least the third time just since uh, Shawan, the kickoff to Shawan that the uh, Pioneers and the uh, Hawks have had a little bit of scuffling after the whistle, so hopefully that won't continue as the day goes on. I think it's a bit chippy out there already. Ryan McIntyre will be in on this left end position as they go with uh, 
a passing option here for Shawan. So they want to bring in some speed, put some pressure on the quarterback as they will show blitz at the line of scrimmage. Witt will read it and adjust the play at the line. Gets the snap out of the gun. The Pioneer stunt, here they come. Jihad Russ giving him pressure, throwing it downfield, and it's incomplete. Throwing across his body, running the left side for a right-hander is almost impossible, and Jihad Russ forcing that bad pass is incomplete, and it's fourth down. Yeah, that ball was a dud the whole way. It was never gonna be caught, so it's just some good pressure by the Pioneers. And forcing the fourth down and Schwarm's gonna have to punt. So uh, the Hawks will come out, punt the ball away. Luis Orellana, the freshman out of Lexington, South Carolina to uh, punt the ball away. Back deep for the Pioneers. I think that's Cannon Hall, it is. Cannon Hall back deep. It's a short punt that gets a Shawan roll that hits at about the 32, will roll inside the 30, inside the 25, and be touched up at the 22. The Pioneer offense will take over first and 10. They score on their opening drive of the game after a four-play 68-yard drive, and they score on the 35-yard touchdown pass from Ivan Corbin to Justice Parham. So it's 7 to nothing, Tusculum. And uh, the Hawks got lucky with about a 10-yard roll there to pin the Pioneers back to their 22. Moving right to left on your radio, as we see it, we take our first timeout of the game. We're back right after this here to Pioneer Field. 10.53 to play here in this opening quarter. It's Tusculum 7, it's Shawan 0. Pioneer football continues on the Pioneer Sports Network. The first date, only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Pioneer Field, Brian State, and Joe Bird, glad to have him back as well. Last time we were home, Tim Wilson was sitting over there as uh, Easter weekend. And it was the spring, so 2019 for the uh, most part was the last time these Pioneers were here. This will be a uh, pin and pull. This is going to be Ivan Corbin faking it to Maurice Gamillion running around left end, and he will pick up maybe 10 yards, maybe 11. Should move the chains, it'll be a first and 10 for the Pioneers. Very good fake play by Corbin's and the Pioneers. Uh, sold the handoff to Megan and he was able to tuck it around to the near sideline as we see it and move the chains. So the Pioneers get the first down. Corbin now, two rushes in the contest and now picking up 46 yards on the afternoon. This will be Courtney Jackson. Jackson, just a powerful runner, breaks two tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Should have been hit for a loss of two. As a matter of fact, we'll get just back to the line of scrimmage. There on the stop is going to be Monte Moore. So it's second down at 10. Yeah, solid effort there to avoid a, a loss of yardage because he was hit well behind the line of scrimmage, probably a good five yards, and he was still able to get back to the spot. Jackson, last week, he did have a good day rushing the football, but the offensive line just blew some holes open for him. But he had the highlight of the day, the hurdle in the secondary. This pass is going to be complete. Justice Parham again up at the 45-yard line. It'll be first and 10, move the chains, pick up of 12. Well, Ivan Corbin, not necessarily as accurate as he would have liked to have been, but Justice Parham is a sure-hand receiver. Uh, Parham this pass is going to be complete. Justice Parham again up at the 45-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Tuskelum continuing to move. Something that we didn't talk about, we'll address through the broadcast. New offensive coordinator, it's an old pioneer, Kyle Dickey. Had a very calm game last week. So far, off to a good start 
here in this one as well. This will be Courtney Jackson again on the carry. This time again, a couple of yards, but it's tough sledding on that left side. We talk about a great defensive front. Isaac Anderson, redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, North Carolina. He's a the immovable object, but somebody that Jerry is really high on is Rafiq Abdul Wahid, a senior out of Baltimore, Maryland. He feels as if he may be one of the best defensive linemen they'll see this year. I mean, that's just the what you got to come in here and face these guys and be ready for them whenever your South Atlantic Conference season starts right here uh, coming up. Second down and nine. Corbin to pass. He's going to pull it down. He's looking for more room to run. And he's going to take a couple of guys and, and juke them at the 50. He'll get into Shawan territory across the 45 and down to the 41-yard line. It'll move the chains. He's going to pull <laughs> Ivan it down. Corbin he's showing his arm last week. This week showing his legs. And he's going to take legs. a couple of guys and, and juke them at the 50. The He'll get into Shawan territory just, across the 45 and I mean, down to the 41-yard line. He put on a move. It just kind of uh, shuffled the feet very quickly and was able to move it downfield across the 50 and into Hawks territory to the 41. First and 10 for the Pioneers, leading 7 to nothing. Three wide outs to the near side for Tusculum. Corbin out of the gun to pass. Looking, steps up under pressure, rolling to his right. A penalty comes in late, and the pass is going to be caught. And again, when you kind of expend that much time. He had a zero early in the play, but he was looking downfield for a lot more. So good coverage by Shawan, but a penalty in the backfield in the area of what would be a hold. Yeah, that's uh, pretty much what this is going to be, and as indicated, it is holding against the Pioneers, so going to back them up on first and long. So 8.20 to play here in this opening quarter. Tuskegee will be moved back to their 49-yard line, and that's where it will be. It will remain at least first down. First down and 20, though this time. Wide out to the right side is Will Sweeper. Joe and I know a little bit about Will Sweeper, the Catawba uh, transfer, wide receiver, the graduate transfer. He'll line up to that far side. He's gotten off to a slow start, battling some injuries coming out of camp, but expect some big things out of him this season as well. This pass is behind the line of scrimmage. No, they're going to rule it incomplete. That's fortunate. It's exactly how Tushkillum scored their defensive touchdown, one of their two last week, on a backwards pass. That was very close to being a backwards pass. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised they blew the whistle as quickly as they did. I'm happy that they did, but I was afraid that that was going to be a turnover for the Pioneer. So Shawan has kind of uh, slowed down the Pioneer aerial attack. Ivan Corbin is 3-for-3, three three, 48 yards, but not. he's looking downfield. He's looking way downfield. There's just not much there. Bryce Moore who is lined up in the slot to the near side. Going to utilize him in as a tight end a lot this season. Had a big catch last week. This will be Corbin looking to pass, looking Moore's way. The pass is downfield. It's going to be caught at the 35. Second down and 20. They pick up about 16 yards. It's and going to bring up third down and four as Bryce Moore gets free, comes up with week. the big catch. Yeah, this will be Corbin looking to pass, looking Moore's way. The pass is downfield. It's going to be caught at the 35. Second third down, down and 20. 20. They pick up about. Made the reception for 22 yards to keep a drive going for the Pioneers. So there's a guy that's uh, made two big plays back-to-back -back weeks. So third down, we'll call it three as they marked him inside the 35 at the 34-yard line of Shawan. Empty backfield with Corbin in the backfield. Courtney Jackson is lined up in the slot to the near side. Corbin with Mahoney snapping it back. Snap is back. Pressure comes, and Corbin takes off running once again. He needs the 31. He'll have the 28 inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. On the stop defensively, Ivan Staples at 315 pounds, a Stone Mountain Georgian native, but not enough to keep the chains from moving. It's first and 10. Uh, a lot of that can be attributed to Corbin just leaping there at the end. He was actually hit what may have been even short of the first down, but he was able to keep his feet about him and just dive forward to get it down to the 28. Corbin uh, started his career at Limestone, where he did a lot of this. And of course, he had a great running back in the backfield with him at that time. But did a lot of this uh, dual threat type stuff. This pass out of the backfield, not as accurate as he had hoped it would be, looking for Maurice Gamillion, and that play was broken up. In the secondary, Monte Moore and uh, applied a bit of a hit there on Maurice Gamillion as well. Second down and 10 for the Pioneers. Uh, that was uh, unfortunate for the Pioneers. Corbin just led Gamillion a little bit too much, uh, and Maurice is unable to pull that ball in. So on that second down with the Pioneers leading seven to nothing. Reggie Kellum is going to get an early entrance into this contest for the Pioneers. Kellum had a big day last week as well as the third running back, but we didn't see him until the second half. 
So it's th second down and 10. Corbin looking over to the sideline, and with two seconds on the play clock, Tushkillum's going to have to burn a timeout. So a little bit of confusion for the first time from that offensive staff. So let's talk about that but as, instead of going to a break. really want to talk about what Kyle Dickey is going to bring to the table. Here's a former quarterback. Here's a guy that's lined up at tight end. And then here's a guy that came in and saved the season for the Pioneers, his senior year at quarterback. And it came in and just played tremendously down the stretch. He's been a high school coach. He's been a, he's called plays at high school. And then he's come to Tusculum as a graduate assistant. Just kind of worked his way up. He worked under Kate Bell during the spring. Uh, learned a little bit of, th of, of things. So I like this system. Brian Ferguson was here when he was the uh, GA and uh, was learning under him. And more not necessarily a running attack, but a spread. And he seems to be very calm, but that's always been kind. If you've ever talked to him, he doesn't have a whole lot to say. Yeah, I mean, and maybe that's a good thing. He's just he's focusing on what he needs to do. He's not overconfident. He's not cocky. He's just, hey, let's get down to business and keep him sort of mild. And he is. Uh, he's just everything about his demeanor just is what is needed for this position because you got fire and ice down there. You got Jerry Odom, who is as animated and fired up as it can be. Now, they say that he's turned a new light leaf a little bit down there on the sideline. And then you got Kyle, who's just cool hand Luke. Second down and 10 for the Pioneers out of this timeout. 6.37 on the clock in the first quarter. Tusculum leading it 7 to nothing. Two wideouts near side, one to the far side. Shelling back tight end at close to the line of scrimmage. And this play does not fool the Hawks as they fake the toss to Reggie Kellum. And Monte Moore will come in from his linebacker spot and make the stop for a loss of two. So now third down and 12 for the Pioneers. Well, I think part of the problem there was you had some uh, difficulty in the exchange from center to quarterback because Corbin actually had to leap up a little bit to get the football in. It was over his head, and that just allowed Shawan time to not let the play develop. Abdul Wahid will line up on the left side or the right side. They just kind of flip. He and Ivan Staples, the graduate, I believe out of Jacksonville University, the transfer. This will be Corbin full on blitz, trying to set up the screen, and Shawan just blew that play up completely. I, to, the offensive line is you're supposed to let the defensive front go, but uh, maybe block just for a second and allow your guy to get open. They had no chance. If they complete the screen, then Kellum is running for days. Yeah, it's a uh, very quickly developing play, and the Pioneers just couldn't get it done, unfortunately. Uh, of course, did get the football off, but not in a very good way. All right, so just outside of Eli Shepard range here, just at the 30-yard line, a, the uh, attempt would be a 47-48. We know he has the leg to get it there. He just hasn't done that in the college game yet. So here it is, fourth down. The Pioneers will leave the offense on the field. Kellum to the right shoulder of Corbin. We're out of the gun with the snap, looking to pass. Pass downfield at the 25 complete is Jero, but is Jero can't break free and that will be a turnover on downs. So only a gain of five, and it brings up first and 10 for the Hawks who get a big defensive stop. Big stop for the Hawks is still uh, not a great problem for the Pioneers there. They did a good job. You didn't give up too much field position. Uh, didn't get the points on the board you wanted to, but you didn't have to punt from your own side of the field. All right, defensively, two scores last week, and I know that uh, Jerry Odom right now, he's like, all right, I've seen him one time. I've seen their offense and what they're trying to do. Still impressed with what Bryce Witt shows. I mean, he's a massive mountain of a kid. Uh, we talked about that a lot in our pregame with Jerry. 6'4", 235. And it's just tough getting to him. And he shows some ability to avoid uh, people like Jihad Russ who can run. So first and 10, bring a man in motion, and they will hand it off uh, to the running back in the backfield. And moving to the left side is Miles Fairley. Fairley from the 25 will move it up near the 28-yard line. Maybe gain the three. There's Craig Watts helping out on that stop defensively. Yeah, Watts helping out with the stop. Uh, you had Schwan running about uh, 20 yards, but picking up only three. Kamari Lovett will move to the right side. He's been playing some of the bandit for the Pioneers. Trey Trawick is into the contest for Jermaine Witherspoon, who was injured last week. He's in there as the uh, strong safety for the Pioneers. And John Smith, the free safety. Witt going deep, and he's got a man all alone at the 40. Caught it. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, and down to the 12-yard line. First and 10 on a bust in coverage into the secondary. And it will be first and 10 for Shawan. And there is a flag in the backfield, and I think Witt took a late hit. All right, and then uh, following that, you had a little bit of a scuffle going on between uh, some of the players in the back there. 
So Samuel Dunn makes the catch, and then the blown coverage, it forced Jordan Taylor to make a touchdown saving tackle. I mean, it was just a wonderfully designed offensive play, confusing the secondary, and uh, running free was done all alone. So the big play, the penalty does go against Tusculum for a roughing the passer, and so they'll add to that with the ball marked down at the 12, and they'll move it to the six. So seven, se seven to nothing, Tusculum, and now Shawan in business deep in Pioneer territory. Yeah, Pioneer defense gonna have to stick up. Uh, we're down four minutes, 55 seconds left here in the first quarter. Tusculum started out well, they've been moving the ball, now it's time for the defense to hold. So uh, 60 yards, longest play of the year given up by the Pioneers. Jerry Odom hates those explosion plays, but Bryce Witt, the school's all-time leading passer, comes up with a big number right there. Jalen Boyd is into the backfield as they go heavy inside the 10. They're going to run Bryce Witt. Witt inside the 5 and down to the 4-yard line. And from his defensive line position, <laughs> that's going to be Quaheem Glasgow. Glasgow comes up with that stop. Second down and goal from the 4. It did pick up a little bit there for Witt. You talk about him being big and he's tough to get to. Well, he's even tougher to bring down once you do get to him. Just a big, big kid. Second and goal. Second and goal coming up. Quaheem Glasgow last week with the touchdown was emotional after he scored that touchdown. He's like, I've just never had anything like this. Again, the beef, three tight ends in the formation. This time, Boyd will get the handoff from the four, and he'll take it down inside the three-yard line. Ty Corey and Brown, Craig Watts, they're on the stop. John Smith coming in as well. So it's third down and goal. They do mark him down at the three. So just move up a little bit more for Shawan. The Pioneers still need to keep that uh, bunch up front. Witt out of the gun. He'll run the pocket left side, looking to run his way into the end zone. They're going to mark him down shy of the goal line, but he is just inside the one-yard line. So it's fourth down and goal. And first-year head coach Mark Hall is going to say, let's go for it. Oh, absolutely. Whenever you've got the – the quarterback and everything the size of Shawan, you go for it right here. Out of the gun, and this will be Witt running left side. He's going to run his way into the end zone. Touchdown, uh, Bryce Witt. Touchdown, Shawan, as they get into the end zone from a yard away. I mean, Witt didn't get in untouched, but he certainly got in unabated because he took one little hit by the Pioneers, sort of half-hearted effort, and stepped forward in for a touchdown. So that was a great drive set up by the 60-yard pass play from Witt and into the hands of Samuel Dunn. And then the uh, roughing the passer half the distance and three plays and they're into the end zone after starting at the eight. So attempt the extra point. McCapney, a sophomore out of Ireland. I don't think I said that properly when he was kicking off, but that's where he's from, Ireland. So the extra point, snap, hold, kick is up and this one's good. Wit, the holder. We go to a break with a new score. 320 to play first quarter. It's now Tusculum 7 and Shawan 7. Pioneer football continues after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. Whenever windshield take one hey guys my windshield just got broken i feel like i need to blow off some steam let's go one two three mr blanks four. there's no need to be stressed geico makes it easy to file a claim online on the app or over the phone yeah but what if i never hear back that's gonna make me want to go jam, jam. no your geico claims team is always there for you that makes me want to celebrate with some fireworks five six seven go boom 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 yeah. Geico, great service without all the drama. Tasha, did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what are you waiting for? Hip hop group tag team to help you plan dessert? Ah, uh, French vanilla, Rocky Road, chocolate peanut butter cookie dough. Scoop this, 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 but Shawan is now thrown for 75 yards as Witt has completed two passes for 75 yards. Uh, Ivan Corbin is 5 of 8 for 70 so far in this football game. So a uh, Pioneer team now, you know, they didn't get the opportunity that they wanted on that last drive, and it's almost as if uh, penalties uh, hurt you. You've got to eliminate some of those mental mistakes. You can't play behind the chains 
and uh, keep the chains moving. Corbin has looked great running the football so far, 62 yards running. Hey, he really does. He's looked great, but they cannot rely just – continue to let your quarterback run like that. You need to get back into some of those uh, plays like you had on the first drive, completing passes. So it will be Derek Wright and Reggie Kellum who will go back deep for the Pioneers. Tusculum facing their second straight CIAA team here today. Eight and four all time against the CIAA. Last week, knocking off St. Augustine's. So McCatney to uh, kick it away, foot to leather. Short, high kick. Fielded by Kellum at the 14. 20, far side return, Kellum, 25, on his feet to the 30, and he'll take it up to the 31-yard line as he'll be stopped there by Jordan Brown. A penalty comes in very late after the play and more jawing going on after the play, and the players have to be separated once again. Yeah, I've lost track. It's already five or six times that that's having to happen. That's probably why they threw the penalty, trying to get this under control. Desmond Arthur, who is a great special teams guy, is pulling some of his team out. Richard Gravel was pulling some of the guys out as well. The offense will huddle on this near sideline for the Pioneers, and it will be a first down at the 32. Would imagine this would be offsetting. Oh, no, it's a face mask. So add 15 yards for the Pioneers at the end of the run. So that's a good one. Yeah, it's going to move uh, Tusculum up to what, about the 47-yard line? So Tusculum is going to have a good field position. Ivan Corbin and the offense getting set to come back out onto the field. And we'll see it'll be Maurice Gamillion, Justice Parham, Derek Wright, and Tyler Agero. The wideouts and Bryce Moore will be the tight end. Thomas Mahoney, the center, will bring the guys to the line of scrimmage. And we're going to get yet another stoppage. Once again, and I believe we have a uh, uniform infraction. That's a point of emphasis this year. Some of the new rules, uniforms, you can't have any demonstrations type thing. So uh, you got to have your hair tucked in. You got to have uh, all that kind of stuff underneath your helmet. I don't have that problem. I don't, yeah. First and 10, Corbin to pass, a zero, and probably would have been good to just drop it. And this should have been a penalty. At the end of it, there was a face mask. They tried to rip Ajero's helmet off, and the official re reached for the flag, and I just felt like, well, we won't throw the flag here on this one. That was a long pass and a dangerous pass, and Shawan on a bubble screen was up to that. Instead of waiting for it to come, it's almost one of those things, that bubble screen needs to be where he's running back toward the quarterback. And it was a completed pass for a loss of two yards. So second down and 12 coming up with two wideouts to the far side. The Pioneers in a dogfight with Shawan. Offsides, free play. Corbin's going to step up in the pocket. He's going to take off and run 50. He'll get into Shawan territory and take it down to the 46-yard line. And it was an offsides play. And I think Tuscan will take the penalty. In a dogfight so with Shawan. Offsides, down, free play. Corbin's going to step Corbin up in the pocket. He's going to take off and run yeah, 50. Like He'll it, get into Shawan territory and take it down to the 40s. Four, third and about three. So Corbin is coming out of the game. He's signaling to Joaquin Colazzo to get ready. Corbin's running all the way off the field. And it's going to be Trey Simmons, who was uh, listed as the backup quarterback. He'll be in. Corbin with, dealing with cramps. Now, it's warm today for sure. Last week, the Pioneers did not have any cramps. But Corbin's been running crazy, 62 yards. They do take the penalty, it, or they do take the play. So it's a third down three, and a new quarterback is in. And it's going to be Simmons, who's going to be down. A blitz off the end, and coming in untouched was Simeon Burns at a Monero, Monero Valley, California. And that's a loss of five on the play. Third down makes it eight, fourth down and nine for the Pioneers. And take a look at this Shawan roster. If you don't know where Murfreesboro, North Carolina is, it's almost to Elizabeth City. So top uh, northeast corner of North Carolina. And they've got a lot of players from California. They, got, wow. they make some recruiting trips, I guess. Yeah, they're, doing, they're doing quite well. Mark Hall, who is in his first year, was the interim halfway through 2019 and went two and two and earned the job. Cantrell to punt it away, and the punt is going to be muffed, but it's going to be fielded at the 20, and there is a halo infraction that's going to go against the Pioneers and add 15 to this. So up to the 35 is where the Shawan Hawks will have the football. As the fair catch was asked for, it was caught, nearly dropped. 
Yeah, we're seeing a lot of uh, penalties here. It's still early in the season for both teams. They've played, you know, not even five quarters of football, and so neither team is just really crisp in terms of penalties. So it is going to be first down. Shawan scoring on their very last drive as they get into the end zone set up by the big 60-yard pass play. And so the halo infraction, again, with the punt returner coming up asking for the fair catch, you have to give him, you know, the two-yard halo, and uh, he was not granted that according to the official. And, again, we've got some more uh, uniform stuff that we're dealing with and guys pointing that out. I'm amazed they're able to have towels tucked in their pants anymore with the way the uniform rule is. So it'll be first and 10 for Bryce Witt and the Hawks. And this will be a handoff on first down. This offensive line just going right at this uh, pioneer defense and getting some good yards. Boyd will carry it up to about the 39, gain of four, second down and six. Yeah, NCAA football, you can just come and go as you please and play where you want, but heaven forbid that if your socks aren't pulled up right. Yeah. Uh, the portal is the new four-letter word. Day-Day is into the contest for the Pioneers. You're going to like watching him, Joe. He's five foot nine, 300 pounds, and he is a run stopper, and he can get after you. This is going to be a handoff to Boyd, and he is going to be hit and dropped by Jihad Russ. Russ filling in for Jackson and Cawthon makes that play a loss this of five going back to, be to the 34. To it's going to bring up a second down and drop by Jihad Russ. By the Pioneers knew exactly what was going to happen. I mean, at the, almost at the moment of the handoff, you had Russ going in and making the stop behind the line of scrimmage. Inside the final 30 seconds of the first quarter, 7-7, Tushkulam Chawan. Nelson Luis out of the game right now as well. So that's a big miss for the Pioneers. So uh, filling in for him is... Uh, Guy on the left side, Yusef Lee, we're going to hear a lot about this season as well. Along with Kane DeShotters. Witt out of the gun on a third and nine. Back to pass. He's being blitzed. He's just going to get rid of it. He's going to go down. He does get just in, just by a yard, to get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. It was grounding, and they are going to throw the flag late. There was no one in the area, but he did just get it back to the line of scrimmage. The problem was, he was not out of the pocket. Not out of the pocket, and nobody within the same area code, so <laughs> penalty against Shawan. So the grounding against Shawan will back him up. The Pioneers apply the pressure. Spot a foul, fourth down, lost it down. So move the ball all the way back inside the 15 to the 12. And that is where they will punt away. Orlana, the freshman out of Lexington, South Carolina, to punt it away. And Jerry Odom giving Cannon Hall a chance here out of Cleveland, Tennessee, from Bradley Central High School to return some punts, just as Parham was back there last week. But Hall also had a couple of chances last week and was really good. So that should have been the last play, but because it was an infraction against the offense, we have a one untimed down. So Orlana to uh, punt it away. Snap is back. He stands in his end zone, and he takes some time. It gets it away, and it will hit at the 42 and roll out of bounds near midfield. And that's where the Pioneers will take over first and 10 when the second quarter begins. We go to break with your score. It is Tushkulam 7, Shawan 7. Pioneer football continues after this. Patriots Day here at Pioneer Field on the Pioneer Sports Network. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tusculum University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, 
Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. Tusculum University the Pioneers is and the Hawks tied at seven at the end of one quarter. Tusculum 137 yards of offense. Shawan 89 yards of offense. Brian State and Joe Bird, Game Station Engineer, glad to have him back as well. Nathan Humbert for us this afternoon. This is going to be a handoff to Courtney Jackson on first and 10 from midfield. He'll get inside Shawan territory and take it for a yard to the 49 before he'll be stopped there by Gilbert Ortiz, a senior from East Dunkirk, New York, second down and nine. Second and nine there for the Pioneers. Going to have to uh, try to get things going back going and retake the lead in this football game. Corbin back in at quarterback for the Pioneers. Trey Simmons did take a snap on that last series, and this will be a zero drop it. Had him complete at the 41 and probably would have had the first down, but Ajero had a 200 yards receiving last spring, dropped it, so it's third and nine. Had the football in his hands whenever he tried to make the pivot to his right going to inside to pick up the first down. He just let it go. Parham will line up to the left. Shellen back with Derek Wright and Ajero to the near side. It's Courtney Jackson, the running back, in the backfield with Ivan Corbin, Thomas Mahoney, the center. Third down and nine for the Pioneers. In a tie game, 7-7. Seven, seven. Tusculum one for three on third downs to this point. Corbin to pass, looking right, looking left, looking for Parham, and Parham brings it in, and the officials are going to say shy of the first by a yard. The issue is when he made the catch coming back to catch to it. Point. Corbin to pass, went out of bounds, shy right, of the line to left, gain. Shawan is going to bring in Parham some beef on fourth down in, and less and than a yard. I think the Pioneers are going to keep the offense the out there. By a yard. They're going to roll the dice here. Got a good field position. Try it for the yard. Shawan did get the change made in time. The snap is made. Corbin's going to take off. He's going to be stopped initially, but makes a move and get across the 40 and take it down to the 39. It'll be a first and 10 for the Pioneers. Good job by Corbin there to pick up the first down and keep the chains moving for Tuscan. Oh, you know, he may not have had a lot of quarterback action at Georgia Southern after he left Limestone, but what he does bring into the fact is just he's a competitor. He is. I mean, just competitor, athletic, just doing a good job so far here for Tuscan. First and ten to move the chains. Pioneers one for four on third, but uh, now one of two on fourth. So it'll be Corbin who will work out of the gun. Three wide outs to the near side. It is Courtney Jackson in the backfield. Corbin to pass. He's under some pressure. He lets it fly. It's complete at the 25 and down to the 23-yard line for another first and 10 for the Pioneers. And I think that's a Derek Wright sighting. It, it is. Right from Jackson Corbin for backfield. a first down. Right, Corbin to uh, pass. He's under some pressure. He lets it fly. It's complete at the 25 and down to the 23-yard line for another first and 10. for 13 yards last week for Derek Wright. So he comes up with a uh, big catch right there for the Pioneers. First down and 10 at the 23. Corbin to pass. He's under pressure. He'll roll right now back to the left. Running. Taking off at the 25, spinning back as he gets to the line of scrimmage and will take it down near the 20-yard line. If anything, Ivan Corbin is going to wear out the defense for this uh, Shawan team. Yeah, he ro rolled around back in the backfield for several seconds, dropped back probably 20 yards from the line of scrimmage, and then was able to take off and pick up just a short game. What I am noticing this week as opposed to last week. Last week, a three-man rush from St. Augustine's. The offensive line handled it. They didn't have any problem. Corbin was back there. He could have taken a nap and, and, and just picked out receiver. Shawan is not allowing that to happen. They are a much better defensive front. Right now, the offensive line is uh, not giving Corbin the time that he wants right now, but I think that Shawan is bringing more guys than the offensive line can block right now. Well, I mean, and obviously that's just the difference in game one to game two. Game one, nobody really knows what anybody's going to have at this level, but Shawan was able to scout last week's game and right. know how they could try to uh, combat Corbin. All right, so this week in the South Atlanta Conference, we are the only game being played right now. On the schedule card, it shows that UVA Wise and Joe Bird's proud alma mater is uh, ranked in the top 20 in the country after their win against Vandy last week. That game is going to be a night game tonight. They was originally scheduled for a 12 o'clock start. So we're the only game in the conference being played this afternoon. Everyone else this evening except St. Augustine's and Limestone, and more on that coming up. 
Second down and nine. Injury timeout is over after some cramping. This will be Courtney Jackson who will take it across the 20 and down inside the 20 to about the 19-yard line. So St. Augustine's had a couple of guys pop for COVID this week. And the rule in NCAA, if you have unvaccinated players, then you have to do contact tracing. And a large number of St. Augustine players are not vaccinated, so they didn't have enough to field a team this week. And this weekend for Limestone, 6 o'clock kickoff, was their Hall of Fame Ooh. weekend. So that was that's a big miss for them. So they'll probably have a ceremony, bring some guys in, say, hey, thanks, and then maybe have some dinner. If you do unsmart things, you pay the penalty. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Third down, a long five for the Pioneers. Corbin to pass. Now he's going to take off inside the 20 and take it down near the 15-yard line. So to bring up fourth down, they need the 12 for a first. And uh, Jerry Odom looking at Kyle. Maybe we're going to play a little pre PC ball, Presbyterian ball. They don't punt. We're not going to punt. Hey, there you go. Uh, new coaching uh, regime down at Presbyterian built on the premise of not punting. Not so. punting nor kicking in any way. So it's fourth down. The Pioneers leave the offense out there. Shawan showing blitz. And Corbin was hoping that they would jump. Ten seconds on the play clock, so they've got some time. Courtney Jackson on his left shoulder. Tighter package on the wide receiving court. Pass out of the backfield is incomplete. Jackson was open. A late flag comes in for a roughing the quarterback. And the Pioneers are going to have a free first down. Fortunately, Jackson was open and probably runs into the end zone. Mark Hall is out to the sideline. He's off the sideline to the numbers. This is a new rule in college football. Any coach that comes to the numbers is also to be penalized as well. And that is not going to bode well for Tim Clifton. I was going to say it's a good thing David Bennett and uh, Zach Willis are no longer at South Atlantic Conference. I promise you, I, I was reading up on those, and I thought, as soon as I read that rule, I thought, that is not going to be good. They did not penalize Mark Hall, but it was a late hit. But it was also a situation that Corbin, if he completes it, it's a touchdown to Jackson. It is, and the Pioneers now have the ball first and goal at the eight. So first and goal for Tusculum. Corbin again out of the gun, converting on fourth down. Jackson gets the handoff, delays in the backfield, and goes right at the linebackers inside the five and down to the four-yard line. Connor O'Brien makes that stop, and it's second down and goal just inside the five. We're talking about East Tennessee State. Don't forget that is Nathan's alma mater. That's true, yes. That is very true. I always, it was always funny. They, they quit football, and it was like, no bucks? No bucks. No bucks. They brought football back with a purpose for reasons that, according to their president, were just what they did last Saturday. Exactly, getting some national exposure by beating an SEC team. Second and goal from the five. This will be a direct run for Ivan Corbin looking for the pylon. He'll tuck it and he'll score it. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Ivan Corbin moving around a big Theobald on that Getting left side and gets into the, the end five. zone from this five yards. Direct That's, uh, run for Ivan Corbin to play. I think for the pylon. He'll tuck it and he'll score it. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Ivan Corbin. Andrew Theobald, the left tackle, is a mountain of a man. Big. Six, seven, 320 pounds. And uh, he just sealed the end and Corbin was able to get the corner and get into the end zone. So Curry to snap it, Cantrell to hold it, and Eli Shepard to kick it. Snap, hold, kick is up, and the kick is good. Pioneers retake the lead. We go to a break, 10.48 to play here in this opening half of action. It's now Tusculum 14, Shawan 7. Pioneer football continues. Patriots Day at Pioneer Field on the Pioneer Sports Network. In 1971, when the Lawson family first started in the car business, there were seven new car dealers in Greenville. Seven. Now there are just three, and only one. You want 30 to be a default for touchdowns, unless you tell me? Unless So we welcome you back into uh, Pioneer Field after the Tusculum Pioneers add to their lead, 14 to 7. And a nice drive for Tusculum. Ivan Corbin from five yards, 10 plays, 50 yards, converted twice on fourth down. Shawan didn't make it easy. And four minutes and 12 seconds off of the clock. 
So out to kick it away, Eduardo Gonzalez, the sophomore out of Co Cosby, Tennessee, he was kicking it last week, and uh, Jerry wants to see this consistently inside the 10. This one will be fielded at the 13-yard line. Tobias, 20, and he'll take it up to the 25-yard line. And on the stop that time is going to be Jordan Smith, a redshirt freshman from Sanford, Florida, and Richard Gravel, two of the first players down there. Good, uh, just good coverage there. Didn't allow a whole lot. And although it is, you know, starting position at the 25 for the Hawks, the Pioneers got a lot of room to work with here. Big game for Corbin. 8 of 12 passing, 93 yards a score. 10 carries, 81 yards, and a score with a long of 35 on the day. Can Bryce Witt counter the quarterback for Shawan? Down 14 to 7, first and 10 at the 25 for the Hawks, taking a man in motion across the formation. Fairly in the backfield with Witt, who steps up in the pocket, delivers the pass, looking for Tobias is incomplete. Had run free from Watt, but it's a pass that's off the mark. Incomplete, second down and 10. It's good coverage there from Pioneers, uh, just keeping pressure up and forcing the throw that uh, Shawan didn't want. So second down and 10 with 10.35 to play. Back into the game will come Boyd. Boyd is a much more bulkier running back, a six foot 220 pounder from Columbia, South Carolina, out of Blythewood, South, uh, Blythewood High School. Second down and 10 for the Hawks. Out of the pistol formation, they'll run the option with the quarterback, Witt. He's going to run into some resistance on that left side. That's Craig Watts. Boy, what a great addition to this Pioneer team has been Craig Watts. Four touchdowns. He came in, made an impact last season, the Valdosta State transfer. He's got big shoes to fill, filling in for Ivan Hogan's, but he makes a stop there after a gain of only one. Yeah, excellent hit. And we talked about earlier about how, how big of a young man Witt is for him to make that stop for as short a gain as he did. That, that was just a powerful knock. So it is going to be a uh, – First, and, or I should say a third down coming up here for Shawan and third down and nine. What does Jerry Odom dial up defensively? It's an interception at the 35, 30, 20, 10, five, end zone. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Trey Trowick. Nine. A 37 yard pick six. Defensively, it's an interception yeah, it at the 35, 30, 20. Defense score just as much as offense. Jermaine Withers Touchdown injured last the week. Pioneers. Comes in Touchdown. for the Pioneers and comes up with the pick, reading the play brilliantly, and takes it to the house to give the Pioneers their third defensive touchdown in two games. Well, a game in less than a half. Yeah, exactly. Uh, still got five minutes and 45 seconds left to go here in the second quarter today. Shepard on to uh, punt it away, or should say to uh, attempt the point after. It is the 36th career interception thrown by Witt as well. The point after is up. The point is good. Back to another break. The defense will be back out on the field when we come back. 9.45 to play here in this opening half. It's now Tusculum 21, Shawan 7. Pioneer football continues after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. The first date, only one chance to make that first impression. Don't worry, this might be new for you, but Ingalls has been there before. From flowers to the freshest ingredients, we have everything you need to put your best foot forward. Oh, I'm so sorry. Remember, you can't get to happily ever after without once upon a time. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. terror that began on this date back in 2001. Today is Patriots Day after the terrorist attack that brought down the towers in New York, hit the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and a plane that went down in an empty field in Pennsylvania. A lot of that is still remembered. A lot of people uh, sharing a lot of their memories as you can do that. So today we commemorate Patriots Day by 
thanking those who have uh, stepped up to the plate as a first responder, those who have protected our, uh, our, our freedoms in this country today, and uh, for those who just per continue to uh, be those inspirations to us. So we thank you for all the efforts that uh, you have done, and hopefully you had a chance to come out here to the game. Uh, you got a chance to see this game for free, and right now it's a good one as well. So we are glad that you could be here. It has been a decent crowd. I'd like to see the student body out. We have a team that is on the road today, two teams, volleyball and men's soccer, plus women's soccer down in Florida doing the Florida trek this week. So good to see the basketball teams and some of the winter sports and spring sports in attendance today. Coming out and uh, living the college experience, getting back uh, things moving forward. Yeah, it's really just good to see some uh, folks back out here in the, in the stands. So to kick it away, Gonzalez put to leather. It's not Tobias who will be returning this one. That's fielded at the 16-yard line. This will be the dangerous returner, dangerous wide receiver, Amik Watkins, who breaks a tackle at the 20 and then gets across the 30 and up near the 40 to the 42-yard line. First and 10, Shawan, the Pioneer defense, comes up with the pick six just seconds ago. And now good field position for Bryce Witt in the offense. Brian, a little bit of bad news for the Pioneers. While we were at break, I did see the training staff taking Maurice Chameleon into the locker room, and he wasn't doing very well, so just walking. He took a weird hit on that pass play. Uh, it was like a screen out of the backfield, and it's almost as if he took a weird step and then got hit as he was taking the step as the ball just kind of deflected off of his hands. So hopefully he will be okay as conference play begins next week and carries through the rest of the season. Hand off, this will be Boyd, and Boyd from the 42 will bumble and uh, stumble his way to the 45-yard line. He took a hit in the backfield. And he's a big kid. Boyd, a lot of guys right now from the 42 are will getting hit and, and potentially knocking themselves silly. The and I think is the case line. here he for it. Jordan Taylor, who came up and tried to go low on the big 220-pounder. And the referee is even looking at Taylor and saying, hey, you, you need to go out of the game. <laughs> he's he's high-fiving people and shaking hands. And he's not a politician. No. So he's uh, maybe go over and get to get him a drink of water and get checked out a minute. Gain of three on the play. Second down and seven coming up. Boyd, again, just a, a big guy. I mean, this is a big team. Shawan is a big offensive line. They have a big defensive line. And, boy, they have some talent in the wide receiving ranks as well. Watkins being their go-to guy. This out of the gun is going to be Witt. He's going to hand it off Boyd right up the middle. He just breaks a tackle. He's just running physically across the 50 into Pioneer territory, down to the 47. That'll move the chains. First and 10, gain of eight on Boyd's toughest run so far of the day. Uh, Shawan moving the football uh, on this drive, heading back into Pioneer territory. We are at five minutes left here before halftime, so the Pioneers need to preserve this lead. Of course, can't give it up in, in one play, but uh, don't want to give up a touchdown right before halftime. First down and 10 coming up. Boyd, I should say, Witt will come under center. In motion across the formation will go Watkins. This will be Witt rolling the pocket, chased by Day-Day White. This pass downfield is going to be incomplete. In and out of the hands of Imeek Watkins in good coverage back into the secondary. We've had some guys get injured back there as well. But uh, on that coverage for the Pioneers was Kamari Lovett. Good coverage there by the Pioneers and uh, good play by Shawan. Both, uh, maybe even best call of that was the no call by the official. Could have yeah. called pass interference on either player and decided to let it go because they were just playing football. Second down and 10. And again, Day Day White was into the backfield. He's, he is just a spark plug of a kid. Just running after. Didn't get many snaps last week. Just got a little dehydrated, but had two sacks and the limited amount of snaps he was out there on the field. Went out of the gun. This time he's going to fake the handoff and will take it himself. And Nelson Luis, good to see him back into the game. Maybe a half yard for Witt, and it'll bring up a third down and closer to 10. They'll say, yeah, no gain. Third down and 10 coming up for the Hawks. Get a big stop here and uh, let uh, get the punt team on here for Schwan. I must have looked at the clock wrong, or it's oh. uh, the, 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 the the lights aren't very good. Okay, Close. Yeah, we're about five. I don't know what time. I don't know how much time left. So seven under. Okay. Yeah, I'm now under eight. Either way, third down and ten. Wit 
out of the gun. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. A wobbler of a pass that's going to be caught inside the 35 to the 31. That's Tobias. Trawick comes over there and got a late hit, but Tobias was able to hang on to it. Probably not the best pass Witt has ever thrown, but it's effective, and it's a first and ten. Uh, a minute ago, I was saying there was five minutes left. Yeah. That. That's what it looked like. Then it looked like they're six, and now they're seven. And they switched it over to the count-up clock. Well, I don't know if you, you, know, you pay attention to the stats. It's fooled them, too. This pass will be complete to Watkins from a little bubble screen, and he'll do well to gain three, maybe just two. It'll bring up a second down and about seven. Trawick along with Kamari Lovett there on the stop. You know, bad break for the Pioneers to give up that. We've always talked about you can't give up third and ten no matter where you are on the field, especially when the other team has the ball in your territory. Well, it's the first third down converted for the Hawks so far in the game. One of four, Pioneers are just one for five. It is 21 to seven, Tusculum. The game was tied at seven. The Pioneers have scored 14 unanswered. This will be Witt, toss right side, and uh, this is going to be the receiver jet sweep toss, and this is a young man, Lawrence King, a junior out of Washington, D.C., and he'll gain about five yards. It'll bring up third down and two coming up for the Hawks. Right now it's uh, third down and a whole lot easier for Schwann, so the Tuscombe defense is going to have to step up on this play. Trawick was there on the stop. Again, he has the pick Four six. Down, Corbin with the rushing touchdown. Trawick coming up with the uh, pick six for this Pioneer team. So third down and two from the 22-yard line. Handoff is going, no, it's going to be Witt. He's going to keep it. He's going to throw it deep at the five and into the end zone. It's a little 10 Tebow. He acted as if he was going to run, and then he pulled it back, and he throws it deep to Watkins, and Watkins beat Ty Corey and Brown. Touchdown, Shawan. Witt to Watkins. Uh, the, the, it all goes back to the uh, first down conversion whenever the Pioneers could have had that opportunity to force Shawan to punt by midfield. A little bit as to what uh, the Hawks was able to do to Mars Hill last Thursday night. They kind of uh, would fake a run, and then all of a sudden, Witt's kind of jumping up, and he's throwing the ball over the top in that secondary. So that one got the Pioneers, and on to attempt the point after. McCatney, 6.07 on the clock. Snap, hold, kick is up, and the point is good. And we go to a break. 6.07 to play here in this first half. It's now Tusculum 21, Jawan 14. Pioneer football will continue. Patriots Day from Pioneer Field on the Pioneer Sports Network. Being a champion takes more than skill, more than endless drills, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the heart to give it your all, the agility to thrive from any angle, and the relentless drive to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create, and the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Is able to take the ball right down the field. Eight plays, 58 yards, set up by a good kickoff return by Imeek Watkins, and Imeek Watkins will finish off the play. Witt to Watkins from 22 yards. And the point after good to make it a 21 to 14 game. Tusculum. If you were watching some live stats, they were fooled with the time as well. They actually had the clock at 5:37, so they've had to readjust. Uh, the time. So if you're looking at that, uh, and now you see that we have added time to the game, uh, don't worry. They're looking at the scoreboard like Joe and I are and having some problems. So Kellum is in back deep to uh, return along with Derek Wright, and Kellum is out there because of the injured Gamillion. And Derek Wright acted as if he was going to bring the ball out of the end zone and smartly takes a knee. So the Pioneers will have it first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Yeah, that was a smart play because he sat there for a minute and started to come out, and then he just waited. And by that point, it, don't even think about it. You, you stop now. Corbin has had a big day for the Pioneers. 8 of 12 passing, 93 yards, 10 carries, 81 yards for the Pioneers. So he has been the catalyst. Courtney Jackson's had a tough time getting going. Five carries for just eight yards to this point. Gamillion just one carry for three, and he is in the locker room. So Kellum has been spelling him in that backfield. 
Jackson is in the backfield right now. Actually, it is Gamillion who is in the backfield. So Gamillion is back, and he is down. A loss of five on the play, and it'll bring up second down and 15. I did not see him return, and whenever he, they took him to the locker room, he, he wasn't moving very well. But uh, it's good to see him back out. At least it must be nothing too bad. So Gamillion back out for the Pioneers. Shelling back. Will Sweeper to the near side. You're going to like this kid, Jackson Boone. He's going to have a, a good career. He lines up to the right side for the Pioneers. And Darian Anderson as the wideout core. 5.27 to play, first half. Tusculum leading at 21 to 14. This will be a bubble screen to Sweeper, and the Pioneers have gone backwards on their first two plays from scrimmage. Good pursuit defensively. It's almost as if that touched down for Shawan has sparked the defense a bit here. Yeah, it really has, and it's kind of a throwback to days of old when I always used to tell the Pioneers, you're going to catch a pass, at least get positive yardage. Don't complete a pass and go backwards. So now third down and 17. The Pioneers just one of five converting on uh, third downs. Shawan two for five in this football game. And the last being a touchdown. So third down and long, and Ivan Corbin will move Bryce Moore to this near side as the tight end. Gamillion in the backfield, Corbin with the snap, looking downfield, throwing downfield, and this will be incomplete. Was looking for Jackson Boone, who maybe have ran the route a bit too far, and a penalty on the play will be a hold against the Pioneers, which will be declined. It's fourth down, and the punt team will be out for the Pioneers. The Pioneers are going to have to punt football spotted on their own 18-yard line. Not uh, not a very good showing for the offense after Shawan's last touchdown. So Cantrell to punt it away. Back deep is going to go Lawrence King, and King had a big day returning punts against Mars Hill last Thursday, which set up another touchdown. So a kickoff return, which gave a good field position on the last drive for Shawan, yielding a touchdown, and now Cantrell is going to be asked to uh, pin them in deep. It will be Cantrell. As a Shawan runs a man in late, good snap. Cantrell's punt is high, wobbly spiral, fair catch asked for, fielded at the 46, and that's where Shawan will take over first and 10. As Cantrell, his fourth season as the punter, 27 straight, now 28 straight games. He's in the top 10 in all career punting categories. And his brother before him, so for about the last decade, we've had a Cantrell punting the ball away. Uh, it uh, seems like the Pioneers have had a pretty good succession of family members taking over for each other. So, Yeah. 36-yard punt, no return. Last spring, Cantrell led the conference 39 yards per kick. So four and a half to play to the half. Shawan down a touchdown, 21-7, to seven, and with the football, and will receive the second-half kickoff as well. This will be fairly in the backfield, is hemmed up by Kane DeShotters and finished off by Jihad Russ. It'll touchdown. be a loss on the play of about two, bring up second down and 12. And with the football, yeah, and will receive the second half kickoff as well. This side. will be fairly in the backfield. A lot of changes on that front. Yusef Lee DeShotters will check into the contest. Back into the game is going to be Nelson Luis, along with Quaheen Glasgow and Richard Gravel on this right side for the Pioneers, the All-American speedster for track. 21-14 Tusculum. Witt working from the gun. Four wideouts this formation and the running back left shoulder. With some time, Witt going to step up in the pocket. A man wide open, downfield, incomplete. Another busted coverage and a man wide open and Witt just overthrew his intended target, Lawrence King, and fortunately, it's still 21 to 14. Kind of looks like the first quarter in that Tennessee game down the road. <laughs> yeah, where they threw the ball deep and just couldn't well, connect. So third down and 12 coming up, and really, Shawan got away with one there. Nelson Luis had come on a stunt, and he was tackled at the line of scrimmage. And it should have backed up the play. As it is, it continued. And Lawrence King, who had a touchdown reception last week against Mars Hill of 48 yards, Unable to connect there, it would have been from about 56 yards. Blitz comes, Witt steps up in the pocket. This pass will be complete at the 42. To the Pioneer 35 and down to the 33 yard line. And on the reception is gonna be done, but there is a penalty flag down. And for sure this time they got the hold because again with Witt under some duress, 
another defensive lineman was tackled. That'll be the case. Holding against the Shawan Hawks. Negate the big 22-yard gain. It'll back him up 12 yards. Very fortunate break there for the Pioneers, but th they're going to have to do better than they've done in the second quarter on whenever you hold the, the Hawks to third and long. You can't keep giving up those big plays. So to bring up third down and 22, back inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. 21 to 14, Tusculum, and a good game here today. Shawan coming in, expected to be a little better than our opposition last week. That was the case. This is a team that is preseason pick number two in the CIAA North, and for good reason. Second team all-conference quarterback Bryce Witt gets the snap. Back to pass on third and 22. He's under some pressure. He's off balance. Let's it fly. It's picked off. 50, 45, 40. 35 and 31 yard line. And the second interception of the day for the Pioneer secondary. Three, and the first of the He's game for pressure. Kamari Love. It puts the Pioneer offense in business. Off. First 50, and 10. 45, yeah, 40. 40. Excellent job. 35 and, and 31 yard line. And the second interception the of the half. day. Well, football's a funny game. You're inches away from a touchdown that just you overthrew your guy. Yeah. And then uh, you get a big first down, you get a hold, and now you throw a pick. And now the Pioneer offense has it in business with 3.01 to play in the first half, leading 21 to 14, and you're at the opposition's 31. Yeah, I like to say the Pioneers get back into the business of what they were doing in that very first drive of the football game. So first down and 10 for Ivan Corbin and the offense. And it'll be Courtney Jackson who will be in the backfield with Corbin this time. Bunch set of wide receivers near side. Corbin, under duress, blitzed, is going to pick up some yards 30. Sidesteps the tackler at the 20, 15. Stays on his feet at the 10 to the 5 and down to the 4. First and goal for Ivan Corbin was hit twice, hurtled one defender, Press, stayed on his feet after contact again, and a big 30. run for Ivan Corbin. Sidesteps the tackler Corbin. at the 20, Just, 15. Stays on his feet at the 10 to the, 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 the 5 and down to the 4. First and goal for Ivan Corbin was hit twice. In history, Tusculum, any conference team, South Lake Conference team, has been successful with a two-dimensional type quarterback. Oh, absolutely. First and goal. Courtney Jackson is going to lose some yards here as Shawan just breaks through that offensive line like a sieve and will come up here a loss of about two. From his linebacker spot, Basilio Fernandez out of Miami with the stop. I don't know, if I, but if I think back, though, you think of uh, Luke Samples at Catawba and Todd Cunningham at uh, at Presbyterian, they were pretty much going to just throw the football and pick you apart. I just think of the successful Carson Newman teams where they've had a guy that was, yes, they run a totally yeah. different offense, but a guy that could run the ball yes. and could throw it. Newberry has always had that yes. two-dimensional step was one a few years ago, another, and Corey Russell. Corbin this time is going to take it himself, and he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Good linebacker play again. That's Connor O'Brien. And it's third and goal from the eight. So when you had those, those types of yeah. quarterback, you had success. Wingate has done it with a basically a pocket passer yeah. since they've been successful as well. And, of course, Bo Cordell was highly successful here. We just didn't have the success in the win-loss numbers all the time. Third and goal from the eight for Corbin. Back to pass. He's under some pressure. Rolling the pocket. Still rolling the pocket. Now he's tucking it. Now he's in some trouble. Now he's down at the nine. A loss of one, and the secondary just not allowing the Pioneer receivers to break free. So Eli Shepard and the special teams unit will be out on third and goal from the nine-yard line as the clock ticks under a minute to play in the half. Well, I mean, this is a shame where the Pioneers, at least today with Gamillion banged up, don't really have that great powerful runner because you get the ball down inside the five, you don't have a lot of room for your passing game to work. So running the football would have been your best option. All right, so Corbin has thrown for 91, and he's rushed for 107. And the Pioneers with the play clock down to about 10 seconds. Are they, you think they're considering this? I mean, they went for it fourth down twice on their touchdown, their last touchdown drive. I'm not so sure. Did, did Shawan call that or the Pioneers? Because it was the Shawan coaching staff that was coming off first, so I don't think it's Tusculum was considering. They pointed Tusculum way. Nice. Maybe they pointed the wrong way. They could have done that. But it wouldn't surprise me as well for Coach Odom. Hey, you know what? It's not like we've had many home games over the last two years. Let's, let's put on a show. 
You know, I'm thinking the smartest play right now at this point in the game, if you feel confident in Eli Shepard, Grandpa John, and we feel confident in Eli Shepard, yeah. you know, just go ahead and get your three points on the board because it could be important later. Hey, coming up here at the half, got a new segment for you. You'll be joined by uh, Dr. Hummels, the president here at Tusculum University, where we will have the Tusculum University halftime report. We're going to find out what's going on here at Tusculum. You can find out as well a lot of new things that will be taking place, so we hope you'll stay tuned. Coming up here at the half, as the Pioneers' Eli Shepard will stay out there and attempt a field goal from 26 yards. Curry to snap it. Cantrell to hold it. Snap, hold, and kick. And this time, Shawan is going to call the timeout, trying to ice Shepard. He did miss one last week against St. Augustine's as they uh, will ice him. Shepard, he, he's not too worried about it, I don't think. That's one of the things that I've always hated is, you know, there, there seems to to be a point of no return once the offense is setting in motion you can't just call timeout as almost as the ball's being right. snapped well yeah it is a bit frustrating all right so the pioneers next week back here at home as we open up south atlantic conference play just to note that the game time has changed next week then there's no official announcement yet but we believe that game next saturday against limestone will be a 3 p.m kickoff it is race weekend in East Tennessee. And I guess Limestone didn't yeah, consider that. Yeah, maybe you should uh, not try to book hotel rooms two weeks before the yeah. uh, contest. That's what I'm wondering. And I'm also wondering if it's just a little bit of gamesmanship because it's like, hey, we actually weren't ever going to come, but we just want to play a little bit later than we normally should. And uh, we're going to play at three. Can we play at three? Now, if Tusculum were to do the same thing, I'm not sure they'd get the same treatment. We'll see if that happens next year. So it is a fourth down, and it is another attempt for Shepard. Snap, hold, kick. No timeout was asked for, and the kick is good. So Shepard does come up with the points right after the interception by Kamari Lovett, which gave the Pioneers some really good field position, and so the field goal is good. Again, 33 seconds left until the half, and coming up, our Tusculum University halftime report will be joined by Dr. Scott Hummel. And that'll be coming up here at halftime. So the drive for the Pioneers covers four plays, just 22 yards. But Ivan Corbin is just having a day. 13 carries, 105 yards a score. He's also 9 of 14 passing for just 91 yards. I know he'd like to have a few more yards, but very, very efficient in what they're doing. And a good offensive game, 194 yards for the Pioneers. Shawan has put up 147 yards, but they have been slowed because of the turnover. One for a pick six and one set up for three. Yeah, it's a good job by Tuscombe's defense so far to keep them pioneers in here. And the defense has still got uh, got some work to do here in the next 33 seconds because unless Shawan indicates that they're willing to just ride this out and go to halftime, the way they're going downfield, there's still time for the Hawks to score. So it will be Imeek Watkins in to uh, return this kick. And he set up Shawan that last time in some really good field position. There's one timeout remaining for the Hawks. They will also receive the second half kickoff. Want to point that out. So they'll be uh, taking that. So it depends maybe on what they do here. If they get some good field position with 33 seconds left and what they may decide to do from an offensive standpoint. 24 to 14, Tusculum leading the game by 10. The game uh, was 7-0 Tusculum, tied at 7, then 21-7, to seven, and then 21-14. to 14. So the left footer, Alderson, will kick it away. Tobias going to pick it up on the roll at the 18, 20, 25, 30, 35, and up to about the 37-yard line. So, again, the return team for Shawan has set up the Hawks in some really good position here. Looks like the ball's going to be spotted at about the 36-yard line for Shawan. So with 25 seconds to play, the defense on that defensive front, Nelson Luis, Quahim Glasgow, Yusef Lee will run out there. So they'll have more of a nickel package in right now, and Richard Gervell. Gervell will be, uh, he's more like a guy that plays in the secondary. So he can apply some pressure. Wit out of the gun. Four wideouts in the formation. They have had some guys running free. I just want to point that out as well. 
and Witt has missed on a couple of guys. Now under pressure, he takes off. He's got room to go. 35-40, 45-50. Penalty flag comes in on the very far sideline, and uh, they're going to throw that, and it will be on the right at midfield. So it depends on what it is, and it looks as if it's going against Tusculum with 16 seconds left. And let me tell you something. This kid from Ireland, McHatney, he has got a leg, and all he's going to need after what appears to be some type of maybe a major infraction, he's not even going to need any more yards. Five yards, maybe ten yards. And I'm not sure exactly what this is going to be against the Pioneers. Uh, he's not going to need any more yards. Maybe five yards is about all that McHatney is going to need to make it a legitimate shot at a field goal here as now the ball inside the 35 to the 32 as Ty Corian Brown is whistled for a hold in the secondary. So 16 seconds, Witt just made something out of nothing on that last play. Schwan does have one timeout remaining. Okay. Yeah, they got that one, so they legitimately got a couple of shots of getting this and I think Jerry Odom wants to uh, take a timeout. So the end of half management, Jerry Odom calling his side to the sideline to get some things figured out. Hey, you see this more and more in uh, major college football. You see this in the NFL. Uh, if you got your timeouts at the end of the half, we're going to use them. I was, I was getting ready to say, did a basketball game break out and <laughs> I miss it? <laughs> but the last two minutes of basketball games, it's always, it takes about 30 minutes to play that aspect of it. And the same type of a uh, situation here, you know, in football, in these end of half management, where you've got time on the clock and you're in a game. You know, it's a 10 point game right now. Shawan's got to feel good about themselves. Uh, 168 yards here at the half, 194 for the Pioneers, and still an opportunity for Shawan. Each team has been penalized five times in this first half. Last week, Tunchkillum had 30 first downs. They led the country in third down defense as St. Augustine's did not com convert a third down last week. Well, Shawan has converted two for six, uh, two of six here in this football game. So it's going to bring up first and 10 at the 33 out of the Pioneer timeout. Hand off to Fairley, and he's going to take it to about the 32-yard line, maybe down to the 31 and so the clock is going to run inside of five seconds. And exactly right. I, I just think this young man has such a strong leg. If he's inside of 50 yards, he's a go. So it might be like that movie, The Replacement. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, out of Ireland, he's probably just like, hey, I, I can make this. So the attempt is going to be, I think, just inside of 50, about 49. Of course, they defeat the Mars Hill Lions last week. Mars Hill... They get back into the win column, a 50-14 to 14 win against Virginia Lynchburg. Yeah, interesting enough, today, Joe, Presbyterian, who set this record last week against St. Andrews, is playing Virginia Lynchburg not once but twice, the, the opponent for Presbyterian today. Fort Lauderdale. Chris Chambers is the head coach. They just added athlete, uh, athletics this past spring. And so Ch Chris Chambers, who is a former Miami Dolphin wide receiver, is the head coach there. They're playing Virginia Lynchburg twice. That's who Pres Pres Presbyterian's playing Fort Lauderdale today. Okay. All right, a 48-yard attempt for McCatney. Snap, hold, kick. Oh, it's got all sorts of leg. And it's good. I mean, it would have been good from 70. And that's a lot to celebrate. <laughs> It is, and that uh, gives us 24-17 lead for the Pioneers going into the break. Whew. Hey, we got Dr. Scott Hummel. He'll be joining us coming up on our Tusculum University halftime report, so stay tuned for that. Plus, this week in Tusculum Athletics, your first half stats, and we will have the second half. Your Tusculum University halftime report next. At the half, it's Tusculum 24. It's Shawan 17. Pioneer football continues after this on the Pioneer Sports Network.
big time at first half as well for this uh, Pioneer offense and Ivan Gorber. We're going to talk a lot more about that coming up at the half. But first, glad to have with us Dr. Scott Hummel. Thank you for joining us and thank you for being here. We're going to learn a lot about Tusculum today, but what a great day just to have some football. Yeah, indeed, it's a fantastic day. Uh, not only is the weather wonderful, uh, the, the campus beautiful, but uh, just being able to see uh, all of the students out here and the fans just uh, makes it wonderful. It is good. All right, so a lot of, uh, you know, if you follow at Pioneer Athletics, I continue to talk about the great history of Tusculum University, uh, where it's come from, where it is. But for those of the, you that might be new to our, to our broadcast, just, just give us a little bit of a refresher about the school. Uh, right, a lot of people may not know that we're actually the oldest uh, institution of higher education in the entire state of Tennessee. Right. Uh, actually the oldest, uh, 27th oldest in the entire country. Uh, in fact, uh, going back over two centuries, uh, actually one of our very first donors to the university was uh, President George Washington while he was still president. Yeah. So talk about uh, history going all the way back. So what type of students do we serve here at Tuscaloosa? Uh, well, we actually uh, serve just an incredibly broad range of students. Uh, certainly we have uh, student athletes like we're watching now, but uh, we've got a broad range of uh, students and a variety of different kinds of uh, uh, majors. Uh, we've got uh, students from right here in Greene County to uh, uh, 33 different countries around the world. Mm -hmm. So just... Um, about any kind of student you can find here at Tusculum. It is a great situation with uh, with Tusculum. And I, I've kind of grown up in the I've grown up in the South Atlantic Conference. Strengths for everybody in the South Atlantic Conference is it's tough to choose from one to the other. But what would you consider the strengths for Tusculum University? Yeah, well, that's actually tough because we've got a lot of strengths uh, here at the university. Um, uh, one of those is certainly a, a sense of Tusculum family. Yeah. Uh, we take care of each other. You've got uh, faculty who mentor, who invest in, in the students. Uh, you've got uh, students uh, that uh, we know their name. Uh, when they go to the financial aid office, they're taken care of. And so uh, by no means uh, is anybody just a number here. Uh, they're really taken care of. They have that hands-on and experiential learning. Uh, and all this, we, we do all this in a caring Christian environment. Yeah. It is a wonderful time of the year. Uh, you look around. So in East Tennessee, I'm not sure you can get a better backdrop for, for anything at Tuscum. So you get the students to come in. I think that's one of the big draws when they come here initially. Yeah, they can see some of the curriculum. They can see things. They get them on campus, and they're like, wow, the historical aspect uh, of what is this. But there's a new initiative that you've kind of set up for the students. Can you, ten, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, that's right. So this year, we um, uh, started uh, Pioneer Wow, uh, Welcome okay. Orientation uh, Week. <laughs> Uh, and it was just a, a fantastic experience. Uh, they certainly drawn here by uh, the opportunities here, uh, academic programs, but uh, right off the bat with uh, Pioneer Wow, uh, we had uh, uh, their orientation teachers, their professors, uh, uh, faculty and staff mentors, uh, that they were already right off the bat being able to establish uh, uh, friendships and relationships with uh, their peers and uh, uh, their faculty. Uh, learning about the university, and so really set up for success uh, here at Tuscaloosa. You know, you hear, you, I hear you talking about these academic programs and, and a lot of that stuff. And you know, over the years, we've had some come in and uh, figure out what is best for these students right now. You've got some right now. Can you tell us a little bit more about what what you feel is really good here at Tuscaloosa? Maybe that's the wrong way to ask that, but just what are, what is drawing some of these students here to Tuscaloosa? Right. Yeah. So uh, great question. We certainly have a very broad range of uh, academic programs here. Incredibly strong. Uh, and uh, the liberal arts uh, uh, with just uh, phenomenal uh, art programs, uh, history programs, but, uh, but also uh, we've got uh, incredible um, uh, nursing program, uh, yeah. STEM programs, science, um, uh, business, and so just really kind of across the board, just uh, uh, great academic programs. And part of the reason why they're so great is because we've got faculty who know their fields, yeah. that are researching in their fields, contributing in their fields, and involve and engage our students in that research and in those fields. Listen, if something everybody is dealing with, and it's been so difficult from athletics. Uh, from my perspective last year, to not have this uh, right now, the student athletes didn't have it, and I, I was lost. Uh, we started basketball, and I was doing a game a night. The, the men were playing at one location. The women the next night were playing a location. It was just really tough to navigate, and it's been tough on everybody. It's not just one person. It's not just one school. It's not one conference. It has been across the board. How has Tusculum been so good navigating what has gone on with COVID-19? Yeah, I, I would say it's uh, really probably uh, two things. Um, one is um, a pioneering spirit. Uh, that's important to us, and so when we're faced with challenges, and certainly COVID has been one of those challenges, uh, we look for ways to overcome, adapt, and get even better. Uh, and because of that, um, our, our athletic programs did phenomenally well last year, won five uh, conference championships, uh, more than anybody else in the conference. Yeah. Uh, so we our pioneering spirit. But the other is Tusculum family. Uh, we were, were, were doing what we're doing, taking care of each other. And so finding ways to do those academics and do those athletics, but in a way that is taking care of each other in a safe and healthy way. 
Uh, it's been tough on everybody, promise you that. And, and I walk around campus, and it, it's very simple. Follow the rules, and I think everybody will, will be a whole lot better off for it. Tuscaloosa is a Presbyterian school, and maybe some people don't understand that. I went to a Baptist school and, and what that was, was all about. But what, what role does faith play here at Tuscaloosa? It, it actually plays an important role. So um, we're building on a rich Presbyterian heritage uh, founded uh, by Presbyterians, and we're still accomplishing many of the things that they wanted to accomplish uh, in, uh, in, in, in making our community and si society better, uh, providing a phenomenal education for individual students. And so we're building on that. Uh, but we certainly have uh, students that represent a wide range of Christian denominations. I'm not even Presbyterian. Right. Uh, but we also have students from other uh, faiths or, or no faith at all. And each and every one of them is welcome. Uh, a part of what uh, uh, faith means here is the caring Christian community. Uh, and that informs how we value our students, how we value each other, how we deal with conflict, how we listen to each other uh, with um, respect. But it also means, I think, a greater liberty. Uh, because here at Tusculum, we can actually talk about science, we can talk about history, we can talk about politics, we can talk about our faith as well. So there's actually no topic that's off limits here uh, because this actually gives us greater liberty to talk about some of the most important questions facing our life. You talked about, I just want to follow up with it because this, you know, we're, we're at a football game. I, I was so thrilled to watch the Pioneer team win a spring football championship. What um, Megan was able to do with the women's basketball team, JT was able to do with uh, his men's basketball team advancing to the NCAA. I saw that firsthand. I was up, up close and personal with that. But it has been such a tremendous year and a trying year. How proud are you of what this athletic staff has been able to do at this point? Uh, well, to be quite honest, uh, it's hard to really express how proud I am. And, and I'm proud of them not only for the, the success on the court and on the field. Uh, of course, we're incredibly happy about that. But the way that they've done it, uh, yeah. in building character and integrity in our students, uh, you know, some places it almost seems like they're having to choose between academic success and athletic success. And here we don't have to choose. Right. Okay? We're, we're actually excelling in both. And so... Uh, when I see the number of uh, kind of um, uh, academic all-stars and all-star teams when it related to academics, and that makes me proud. Uh, when I hear um, uh, athletic alumni talking about the way that their coaches invested in, that makes me proud. So I I'm proud all the way around for our, our student athletes and our coaches. He's Dr. Scott Hummel. He's the president here at Tusculum University. You nailed it. Good job, sir. Thank you. We're back with more of our Tusculum University Halftime Report. We'll have a look at our first half statistics. That's after this when we return. It's Tusculum 24, it's Shawan 17. This is Pioneer Football on the Pioneer Sports Network. in the pocket. We'll talk more about that. These are the numbers and only the numbers. Tusculum 22 carries, 103 yards. Shawan 18 of 56. Passing Tusculum 91, Shawan 114. Corbin is 9 of 14 and uh, Britt is just 4 for 12 but two picks. 
36 plays, 194 yards for the Pioneers. 30 plays, 170 yards for the Hawks. Kickoffs, uh, four for 69. Shawan, just two for 41 for the Pioneers. In the uh, first half as well, five penalties for the Hawks for 60 yards, five for Tusculum, 46 yards. Tusculum's had the ball 17 minutes, 17 seconds, 12.43 for Shawan. Tusculum, one of seven on third. Shawan, two for six. And in the red zone, Tusculum's two for two. Shawan, one for one. Rushing, Ivan Corbin leads the way, 13 carries, 105 yards, and a touchdown. No one at more than 10 yards. Courtney Jackson, six for six yards, the second leading rusher. For Shawan, Bryce Witt, the quarterback, seven for 31, also with a touchdown. Bryce Witt, four of 12, passing, two picks, a touchdown, 114 yards. Ivan Corbin, nine for 14, 91 yards, a touchdown, and a long of 35. Justice Parham, three catches, 56 yards, the score. Tyler Ajero, Two for just three. Bryce Moore, Derek Wright, each a catch for 17. And for Shawan, Malik Tobias, two for 32. And Sam Dunn, one for 60, setting up a touchdown. Cantrell averaging 34 yards a punt. Orellana, 39 yards per punt in that first half. Trey Trawick has the pick six. He also leads the team with four, touch, with four tackles. Quahin Glasgow, Jahad Russ, and Ryan McIntyre, each with three. And for Shawan, Monte Moore leads the way with seven tackles. Basilo Fernandez and Connor O'Brien, each with five. When we come back, it's time for our scoring place. That's when we return with more Tusculum University Halftime Report, where it's Tusculum 24 and Shawan 17. Pioneer football continues. Patriots Day from Pioneer Field on the Pioneer Sports Network. win the toss receive elect to receive the kickoff and after Ivan Corbin would flash his leg power he would also show his arm power as he would throw the ball 35 yards down the field to Justice Parham downfield looking downfield for Parham catches it at the five and into the end zone touchdown Pioneers touchdown at Justice Parham from Ivan Corbin covering 35 yards Four plays, 68 yards, a minute 45 off the clock. Shepard's kick made it seven to nothing. The Pioneers would uh, stall out offensively a bit, and uh, Shawan would uh, take over. A big 60-yard catch, and Bryce Witt would punch it in on fourth and goal from the one. Gun, and this will be Witt running left side. He's going to run his way into the end zone. Touchdown, uh, Bryce Witt. Touchdown, Shawan, as they get into the end zone from a yard away. 7-7 seven, seven with the McCatmany kick, six plays, 75 yards. So the Pioneers go into the second quarter, and they would start to, you know, taking some field position as well. Ivan Corbin scrambling in the pocket. He would scramble his way on a direct run this time around left end for a five-yard touchdown score. Direct run for Ivan Corbin looking for the pylon. He'll tuck it, and he'll score it. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Ivan Corbin. Moving around a big Theobald on that left side. He gets into the end zone from five yards. 
Ten plays, 50 yards, 412 off the clock. Shepherds kick, making it 14 to 7. On the ensuing drive, the Pioneers would get a defensive score, this time from Trey Trawick. Dial up defensively. It's an interception at the 35 30. 20, 10, 5, end zone. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Trey Trawick. 38 yards officially. Eli Shepard's kick makes it 21 to 7. Siobhan not going away just less than three minutes. Uh, actually, three and a half minutes later. This time, it would be Imeek Watkins from Bryce Witt. Point. No, it's going to be Witt. He's going to keep it. He's going to throw it deep at the five and into the end zone. It's a little 10 Tebow. He acted as if he was going to run, and then he pulled it back, and he throws it deep to Watkins, and Watkins beat Ty Corey and Brown. Touchdown, Shawan. Witt to Watkins. 22-yard touchdown play. Eight plays, 58 yards, three and a half off the clock. The point good, 21 to 14. Tushkillum takes another turnover and gets some good field position. Eli Shepard comes in and drills a 26-yard field goal to make it 24 to 14. But just before the half, Jude McCatmany, the 47-yard field goal officially, and it would have been good from 70, I promise you. Three plays, 33 yards, your first half scoring drive. Second half action is on the way, so stay with us. Thanks for listening to the Tusculum University Halftime Report. It's Tusculum 24, it's Shawan 17. And Pioneer football continues here on the Pioneer Sports Network. Federal Bank, Mortgage Investors Group, Corley's Pharmacy, the Red, White, and Blue Marathon Quick Stop Market, Perry's Flooring, and by Gateway Ford Nissan. And now, Joe Bird and the voice of the Pioneers, Ryan Staten. Pioneer Football kicks off. So we welcome you back into Pioneer Field. Brian Staten rejoined by Joe Bird, where the Pioneers Lead 24 to 17, but Joe, big end to the first half. McCatmany, a 47-yard field goal. It was just dead on, straight on. I mean, it was tremendous. And now, Shawan with some momentum, and they receive the second half kickoff. Uh, they really do. And look, at the, if memory serves me correct, all three of Shawan's scoring drives came after the Pioneers gave up big plays that they can't afford to give up. And whenever you get this team held back third and long, you've got to make that stop. So hopefully they got some adjustments made at halftime. We put a little stat here in our game notes about explosive plays. And uh, Shawan definitely had some of those in that uh, opening half uh, of play. Tusculum has had some explosive plays, and Ivan Corbin has been good. Um, and the 35-yard pass play ran for 35 yards as well. So Corbin has been very good, but he's going to need some help here in this second half. Yeah, he really is, and it you know maybe comes back to think about where we said they had the ball first and goal on the five and had to settle for three. He can't have that. So Gonzalez to kick it away as we start the second half. Right, staying with Joe Bird. This will be Watkins. He will field it inside the tent. So that's better. 
And then the uh, pursuit by the kickoff return, the kickoff coverage team gets down the field and does a really good job on this particular play for the Pioneers, or at least this particular kickoff. So, a, uh, again, still guys getting in the face of each other. And really I've learned it's more special teams than it has been anything else. Uh, it has, and, uh, and it started all the way back in the first quarter after the Pioneers scored. So maybe things will uh, calm down a little bit and play some football. Hope so as Shawan starts out here at their own 24-yard line. Again, in that first half, went pretty good as he goes uh, 4 of 12, but it was more of his running ability, 7 of 31, but he did throw the two interceptions. Long pass. This pass is going to be complete to the far side. They run their, their version of the bubble screen to Lawrence King, and that will gain some big yards, about 6, maybe 7, across the 30 near the 31. Yeah, but unfortunately for Tusculum, Shawan's version of the bubble screen picked up a big gainer yeah. and opens up a nice play here for the Hawks on second down where the Pioneers have been going backwards. Uh, the key to the bubble screen is the arm strength. You have got to be able to throw the ball out there and deliver. It's almost a timing pad pass. And you can't loft it out that way. So it will be Wits working out of the gun. Boyd is the running back. They'll fake the end around. Witt will take it right up the middle across the 35 and gain the first down. Witt, again, 6'4", 220, is just a mountain of a kid. And he'll take on defensive linemen all day long, and he does there against Jordan Smith. And it's a first and 10. Uh, and Pioneers had it sniffed out very well, but as you say, just tough to bring Witt down. So... Uh, First minute gone here in the second half. And the Hawks with the first down at the 36-yard line. Moving left to right on your radio. 24-17, Tusculum with the advantage. Led by as many as 14 in the game. This time, Witt, play-action pass. Looking across the middle, it's going to be complete. Watkins on a good play-action pass into Pioneer territory and down to the 49-yard line. First and 10, moves the chains, pick up a 15. And moving into Tuscan territory to say ball to 49. Shawan's picking up right where they left off at the end of the second. On the move once again, they're going to bring Watkins and put him in the backfield, who just made the reception. Tied in from the right to the left in motion. They'll throw another bubble screen out there to their playmaker, Lawrence King. King will take it down to the Pioneer 45-yard line. We're going to bring up a second down and six. So, Shawan also going a little tempo here to start this right, They are not letting the Pioneers get set any quicker than they have to. The only reason they're slowed down right now is because they had a player off downfield. It will be second down and six at the 45. Pioneer defense not even adjusting as Witt takes the snap, and he's only going to gain minimal yards. It is positive yards, just minimal, as he will take it near the 40, but will be downed officially at the 43-yard line. We're going to bring up third down. It's uh, third and manageable, but uh, third and manageable for both teams on this situation, Brian. Yeah, I, mean, I think the Pioneers, you, you almost get a sense you need to stop. Right down, Shawan, a great start to the second half, scripted or not. They got a lot of momentum. They'll have four wide outs stacked on either side. And Witt will work from the gun. Boyd in the backfield. They'll hand it off to Boyd, and he runs into some resistance shy of the first. Down to the 41. It will be fourth down and a yard. And my question, my thing is, no doubt, this, this coaching staff is going to tell the Hawks to go for it. It's going to be about fourth and two, really. But as you say, they're going to go for it either way. A, they need inside the Pioneer 40, more like the 39. The Pioneers continue to adjust defensively. Jerry Odom is not liking it. He did not get them adjusted in time. So a timeout will be taken on the defensive side. You typically in the second half like to keep your timeouts for that offense. Yeah, you don't want to be burning a timeout here uh, just three minutes or so into the second half of the football game on defense. Hey, coming up this Monday night, just to note that special time, Mondays, it will be the Pioneer Football Show, and we're live at Applebee's. We're back at the restaurant after a year. Took the holiday this Monday off. We had the show, but uh, we decided we'll take that Monday off. And this Monday, we're back at Applebee's. Join us with Pioneer Coach Jerry Odom for the Pioneer Football Show radio side. And the TV show will uh, record that for you on Tuesday. Get some highlights of this game here from Jerry Odom. And that will be on the Pioneer website through TuscalumPioneers.com. So it's the Pioneer Football Show with Coach Jerry Odom, radio and TV, coming up this week. Oh, out of the timeout. Pioneers line up defensively. It does not change the mind of Shawan. They will still go for it on fourth down. Witt working from the gun. 
Speed in the backfield. Speed in as a wideout. And Witt shouting out instruction. We'll send a man in motion. Watkins. Witt's going to keep it. They anticipated the quarterback sneak, and they dropped it. Craig Watts gets in there. Jordan Smith makes the stop at the and line of scrimmage. It'll be a turnover on downs. The Pioneers have it first and ten. Yeah, we'll send a man in Pioneers. motion. Watkins. Witt's going to keep it. They anticipated the quarterback sneak, and they dropped it. Greg Watts gets in out. there. Jordan. Jordan Smith, a young redshirt freshman out of Seminole High School, Sanford, Florida. He is a huge run stopper. He's played a lot of minutes in this game. But Craig Watts comes in and reads the play and makes a uh, makes it very tough on Witt. So a turnover on downs. Maurice Gamillion is back in. He ended the first half in the backfield. He's in the backfield with Ivan Corbin and this Pioneer offense. Moving right to left on your radio dial. First and 10 from their 41. Play action pass. This will be Ajero. It's incomplete. Corbin not as accurate that time. Ajero didn't pick it up. If he's just as able to catch it, he picks up six yards. He's going to take him off his feet and to the turf. But as it is, second down and 10. Yeah, bad break for the Pioneers there. Just a little bit quick and uh, difficult for Ajero to catch it, the Corbin pass. So second down and 10 as Ivan Corbin back in at the gun. He went out of the game early in the first half with some cramping issues, but he only missed one play. Fortunately, it was a third down and long. Corbin to pass. He's under pressure. He's sacked. First sack of the game, and that's Abdul Wahid. He is a man at the defensive front, and he comes up with the first sack of the game for either side. Going to be a loss of 12 for the Pioneers now setting down, setting up third and 22. This offensive front has been challenged mightily by the Shawan Hawks today. Very impressed with what they are, they are able to do defensively up front, and it did not surprise Jerry Odom this week either. He, was, he knew it was going to be a challenge for his team with that defensive front. So now third down and 23 coming up for the Pioneers. And this is a big ask. Tuskillum has not done well on thirds. They're just one for seven. Corbin with the snap. Back to pass. He'll throw a timing pattern out to the 40 near the original line of scrimmage to Ajero, but that will be fourth down and 11 coming up there on the stop in the secondary is Caleb Hester. Yeah, that play would have been nice whenever the Pioneers were back up here where they started their drive. Yeah. Unfortunately, they were so far back, the big gain wasn't even enough to get back to the original line of scrimmage. You, know, you can't have the drop on the first down. It wasn't really a drop. It was just a very – low pass that Ajero could not come up with. So Cantrell to punt. It would be his fourth punt of the day. Make it his third punt of the day. And just a long of 36 to this point. Good snap. Cantrell gets it away. It's low end over end. Fair catch sliding for and made at the 26-yard line. And that is going to be Lawrence King. So right now, a penalty is down as well. It's going to be uh, roughing, on, uh, roughing the punter. Well, they run into him for sure, and I hate the rule where you, the official can say, well, it wasn't roughing, it was just more like running into. So uh, instead of re-kicking, Tusculum just decides it was only a five-yard penalty. Well, that's not really – that means you could just run into the guy anytime you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it's if there's no real penalty for – And touching him. Yeah. It should just be straight up 15-yard penalty. Yeah, just I mean, make it simple, make it easy to take the subjectivity out of it. Whenever you ran into the punter and he wound up on his backside, it's a penalty. It's like the face mask. It's a face mask. Whether he meant to do it or not, he grabbed the face mask. We don't, we don't do that. You can't do that. You don't have a 5-yarder or a 15-yarder. It's not all the way out of the game. It's out of the game here, but one of those things that is my pet peeve. First down and 10 for Shawan as they have the ball at their own 27-yard line, trailing 24, 27, 24 to 17, sorry, I'm reading things backwards. And the running play for nothing. That defensive front coming up with a big stop for the Pioneers as well. That's Boyd on the carry, but there's Day-Day White comes up with the stop with Yusef Lee. Yeah, was a big play there, but the defensive front setting up uh, Shawan to have to make something happen here on second down. So we'll see if the secondary can uh, do their job as maybe the Hawks look downfield. So it is second and 10. And Witt will work from the gun. Three wideouts to the near side. Fair, 
backfield in the backfield fairly for Shawan. Under pressure is Witt. Still under pressure is Witt. He's going to loft it and throw it incomplete out of play as he just got rid of it as the Pioneer defensive front was chasing Witt, but they just couldn't get there. Hey, you know, for a big guy, he does move. Uh, he moves well. Moves well. It's like the dogs at the racetrack chasing the rabbit. They just yeah. can't get there. I was thinking about that a minute ago when you mentioned someone being from Sanford, Florida. I remember oh, yeah. uh, being at the dog track down there more than once. <laughs> on the way to Disney. I, I, that's why I remember Sanford, Florida. It's on the way to Disney. 5.55 to play here in this third quarter. Tuskegee leads 24 to 17. Second offensive series for the Hawks here in this third quarter. I think it's 550, maybe more. Witt to pass. He's hit as he throws, and it's incomplete as it throws the play off, and that's just great pressure by the Pioneers. Jihad Russ, Watts was back there. Ryan McIntyre's back there. Love the way McIntyre plays, and that forces a fourth down. Yeah, it's really good play by the Pioneer defensive front to put the pressure on Witt, make uh, get Schwan off the field. Now we've got the punt unit coming off. So uh, drifting deep, Cannon Hall, the freshman out of Bradley Central High School, Cleveland, Tennessee. And getting sent to uh, kick it away is going to be Orellana. In the punt, number 83, Luis Orellana. 24-17, Tusculum. And maybe that's nine minutes, isn't it? It's tough to tell the clock. So Tycorian Brown is blocking. Fortunate he didn't touch that ball as he was blocking downfield. Joel Hicks will... Touch it up. I think instead of the five minutes I was talking, I think it's more like nine and a half. I think that's probably what happened there earlier in, in the second quarter. I was like, oh, well, there's five minutes and something. No, it's nine. I thought it was interesting that there was that much time gone. So that, yeah, that's my fault. But we'll get the we'll get all the lights fixed in that thing one point. I don't know why we're having. Oh, we have the uh, timeout. So we're taking a timeout. We're back in one minute here to Pioneer Field. I think nine and a half to play here in this third quarter. It's Tuskegee 24, Shawan 17. Pioneer football continues. Patriots Day uh, on the Pioneer Sports Network. Hello, my name is Jacob Faith, and I'm the Dean of the College of Business at Tuskegee University. I'm proud to share with you that the programs in the College of Business received accreditation through ACBSP in December of 2018. The Accreditation Council for Business Schools and Programs accredits business schools and programs worldwide. This accreditation elevates our programs to the top programs worldwide. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. That's what's on the clock. 24 to 17, and Pioneer offense on the field at the 40-yard line. Ivan Corbin will work from the gun in the backfield is Courtney Jackson. Corbin rolling the pocket right side. Man, he's under pressure. He's going to loft it downfield and throw it out of play incomplete. And a lot of wrestling downfield with some receivers and, and again I know you want them to play and, and, and all of that but when you're not able to break out of your turn usually that's a hole and you're having to readjust yeah. your jersey back over your shoulder pads where you were dragged down by the neck of your shirt you know pretty sure that's against the rules that's Darian Anderson he had to readjust his entire jersey yeah, okay Will Sweeper is out there as a wide out for the Pioneers and Jackson Boone. Corbin working from the gun. Boone will come in motion. Jackson in the backfield with Corbin, who's just been under pressure all day. He's going to take off running this time and try to avoid the uh, pressure. And does, but a sure-handed ankle tackle that time and getting the finger, Basilo Fernandez, the sophomore from Miami, Florida, the don't come at me finger, that little no you don't, the Dikembe Mutombo finger. Fernandez has been on a lot of tackles. He's had a good game. Yeah. It's going to be third down. Bad break there uh, for Corbin. He, all he had to do is high step one more time, and he would have at least picked up the first down, I believe. So the Pioneers struggle in the passing game. Just 103 yards today so far for Corbin. 
But he is nearing 100. He was over 100, then took a sack, so now he's nearing 100. Back again at 96 yards. So third down and six for the Pioneers. They're trying to protect him, and he's going to go down. But he's going to go down after a gain of a yard. He got a guy wide open, and he just doesn't have time to see those guys open. So Shawanda's done a good job in forcing Corbin to not even come off his look. But wide open was Darian Anderson, who had come across the middle of the field. Corbin just couldn't get the ball to him. Yeah, Pioneer's going to have to do something to start buying the quarterback a little bit more time to give him room to work. He does a great job when he's flushed and run, but you can't count on that every play. You've got to figure out how to max protect and get a guy like Justice Parham one-on-one -on -one with somebody. you just got to figure out a way to work that. So it's fourth down and five. Can trail to punt. Gets away his best of the year. Very high, drifting back Watkins. Fair caught inside the 10 at about the 9. That's where Shawan will take over first and 10, but they trail just by 7. As the offense stymied here to start this second half, really was hoping that they could get into a drive. So now the defense is going to have to help out things once again for this Pioneer team. Well, Pioneers uh, keep pushing back, keep pushing back with the punts by Cantrell. Hopefully the defense can hold once more and get the football back and try to score. 46-yard punt, fair catch by King. And again, the best effort of the year for Cantrell. So Shawan taking over, first and 10. They have 205 yards of offense. Now Tusculum with just 198. So they have done the job against the Pioneer offense. Witt working out of the gun. Tobias will go in motion, and they're going to hand it off and right up the middle, not much running room. Running right into Quahim Glasgow, right up the middle. And that's Miles Fairley, the junior from Greensboro. So Wits it's second down and nine. Working had a little out bit of, of the uh, gun. Tobias will go in motion, right and they're going to hand it off and right up the middle. Down, so so running running right into Quahim Glasgow, right stop. up the middle. J.D. White is and out there. Jordan Smith, Quahim Glasgow, Kane DeShotters. That's the defensive front for the mm -hmm. Pioneers. Raynell Killian went out early in this contest, and he has not returned for the Pioneers. So already without Jermaine Witherspoon after being injured last week. Witt to pass, this pass across the middle. What a catch. An incredible catch right across the middle. Craig Watts was in coverage, but I mean Watkins makes the catch shy of the first down. Are they going to move it? They will. It'll be a gain of right at nine yards, first and ten for the Hawks. Just enough to move the chains and uh, give Schwann a new set of downs. Uh, that's an incredible catch. And, again, not a lot of time for Witt either. Pioneer defense has been good. And a good one here as we go under seven minutes to play in the third, 24 to 17, Tusculum. Witt and the Hawks on first and 10. This handoff again fairly, and this time uh, coming in from that secondary is going to be Kamari Lovett to make that stop in the backfield on Fairley. Actually, the new running back that time Wins was Tyreek McNeil, still from Greensboro. And it'll be a loss of two, maybe three this on the play. This handoff again fairly, and this time uh, coming in from that secondary is going to be Kamari so Lovett to make that stop in the backfield. Come up with another hit behind the line. They had eight sacks last week and then 17 hits behind the line of scrimmage. Have not had that time of a game just cannot get to wit to bring him down just haven't had that type of a game but with under 10 seconds on the play clock wit finally getting his offense set tobias will come in motion across the formation and mcneil with a handoff and he's got running room 20 25 and he'll take it up to about the 28 yard line and the reason he had some running room, a great block was set on the right side of that offensive front. Yeah, he made a really good move there in the backfield. Pioneers had it read pretty good, but Neil's just able to bounce around a defender and pick out the big game. So third down after it was second down and 12, McNeil picks up tw uh, 10 of the 12 yards needed. McNeil stays in the backfield. Witt is going to carry it, and he is going to be hit and dropped in the backfield, and that will be a loss of two, and it will bring up fourth down and about four. Going to be no hit and dropped yet. in the now backfield, and that'll be a loss of two, say, and it will bring up fourth down and about four. To go for it on fourth and long right here. And really, Shawan fortunate there was not a block in the back as reading that play nicely was Jordan Taylor, and then he was kind of blocked in the back, or Witt is down even further back. But, again, good pursuit, good pursuit by the Pioneer linebackers. Kamari Lovett coming up with that stop. Orlana to punt it away. Cannon Hall is back deep to receive it for the Pioneers. Punt is end over end. Hall drifting up and makes the catch and without fear at the 45 to the 50 and to the Shawan 49-yard line. 
It'll be a six-yard return, but, man, it's, it was scary. It was a gutsy six-yard return <laughs> for him to field the ball the way he did and uh, get a little bit out of it for a Pioneer. And, and he's even got a smile on his face as he comes off the field. I'm, I'm watching him right now. Everybody's high-fiving him, saying, man, you're crazy. You, you're crazy. And I think literally that's what all of them are saying. <laughs> well, you got to have a little bit of that in you yeah, as a punt return. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Coach, you're always looking up. You're never really looking to protect yourself, and that's why there are rules in the game to protect those guys. But uh, that was exciting. All right, this offense has done nothing here in the second half. Needs something here. Nice drive would, would benefit them, I think, go a long way. With 447 to play, I think, here in the third. 24-17 Tusculum. Maurice Gamillion in this running game is not going unless you're named Ivan Corbin, but no one else. As a matter of fact, Gamillion on that carry, now that takes him to minus one yard for the day. It's a gain of a yard. A gain of a yard. That, uh, Gamillion obviously banged up early, so not having the game that he had last week against St. Augustine's. So two wide outs to the near side. One to the far side is Parham. Derek Wright in the slot. Ajero the wide out here to this near side. Shellen back the tight end set to the left. Corbin working from the gun with Gamillion. The pass, Corbin is going to go deep looking for Parham. And this pass, Parham, no. They say it's incomplete. There is no way that is a, a free play. Parham was could not come back to the ball and get it. Unfortunately, they're going to say just good defense overall. And maybe the way you look at it, you know, it's just good football. I, you know, yeah, it is good football, but it's also against the rules whenever you're taking the receiver out down the field True. to prevent him from covering or catching the ball. And it's just – it's tough to what it, – there's – you know, as, a, as an official, if there's contact in the secondary, you can just say, all right, if anybody touches anybody, it's pass interference. But you just can't have that in the game, I think. So there has to be that little bit of judgment for officials. Corbin to pass on third down here, and he's fortunate – that it's not being returned for a touchdown. That's good closing speed by this secondary. And there on the play, I think it was Keyshawn Pickett out of Prattville, Alabama. So a three and out again for the Pioneer offense. And they have been stuck on 198 yards offensively since the first half. Not doing anything so far here in this uh, second or second half, third quarter, if we go down under four minutes to play. So Cantrell to punt it away. Defenses have come out here in this second half after an explosive offensive play uh, situation in the first half. Can trail to punt. It's a good snap. And, again, he gets away a great punt. Drifting back deep is going to be Watkins. He's going to watch it hit a yard deep in the end zone. And uh, that's a pretty good play. Or I should say Lawrence King. So it'll be first and ten from the 20 for Shawan. A bad break for the Pioneers. Needed another second or so to get somebody down there to help keep that ball out. But unfortunately, that's going to give Shawan the football to 20. So the Pioneers lead 24-17. Shawan with 222 yards of offense. They've been able to move the ball a couple of first downs here in the second half. And it will be Witt. And who will be the running back It is going to be McNeil that will start this series. Three wide outs, Watkins and King to the near side along with Tobias. All three wide outs to the near side, and they'll run to the far side. McNeil and nothing there. The free safety coming up from his free safety position, John Smith, the team's leading returning McNeil tackler from the McNeil and spring. nothing there. The It'll free safety no coming up from up his down to 10. free safety Defensive position, front, John has Smith. Really come to play the these team. last three series. They just have to be careful and guard against getting sucked too much into that because we know Witt's got the ability to burn Tusculum deep. Nelson Luis, Jamichael Wilson is in. Yusef Lee along with Xavier Clements on this defensive line this series for the Pioneers. Witt out of the gun. McNeil behind him. And this will be Witt play action. He's under some pressure. Nelson Luis says, come here. Brings him down back at the 16. It'll be a loss of four, third and 14 coming up. And that's Nelson Luis. Very McNeil nice play by, by Luis not to let and the this will be pull Witt away from him. Play Witt action. tried to make a move, but Luis He's is under on top some of pressure. Right, Nelson Moultrie, Luis Georgia, says, come here. Brings him down back the at the 16. Here It'll be a loss of four, third and 14. That's the Pioneers with 17 tackles for loss and 10 sacks. And then stepped away. When it went somewhere else. And then said, hey, I, I'm going to come back. And we're Picking up fortunate. where he left off. Yeah, we're fortunate to have him back. 
Third down and 14. Two and a half to play in the third. Tusculum leads 24-17. Witt from the gun. Fairly in the backfield this time. Witt under some pressure. Avoids the pressure. Throws it downfield. Complete to Watkins, who has the chains moved for a first and 10 on a pickup of 16. Well, there you go. We've seen this already play out on all three scoring drives. The Pioneers have an opportunity to get them off the field. You give up that long third down. So hopefully it doesn't repeat itself. Uh, a little bit of a difference, too, in the quarterbacking play. Witt at 6'4", 220. He's able to break arm tackles and still keep his eyes downfield. Yeah. Corbin is not that, and he's scrambling for his life, and he's not able to keep his eyes downfield to the wide-open receivers. First down and 10. Under two minutes to play in the third. Witt, toss, Tobias, and a good run defense by Kamari Lovett, who will make that stop behind the line of scrimmage. So the Pioneers are reading nicely what Shawan is doing in the running game. Kamari Lovett, it's just Witt who will make that plays stop the behind yeah, the line of scrimmage. So the Pioneers are As reading nicely. The running game, nicely. the Pioneers have done a really good job shutting it down here as we go a minute and a half left in the third. But those passes are going to end up biting the Pioneers before long. So it will be second down 13, loss of three, back to the 28-yard line. Witt out of the gun, back to pass, rolls the pocket near side. It will dump it off fairly complete at the 30 and goes out of bounds near the 33. So they'll gain five yards back, but it will be third down and eight now coming up for Shawan. Come down, be under a minute by the time I snap the football, so let's see if the Pioneers can actually get a third down stop and force another punt. Under a minute to play, 24-17, Tuscola. Fairly on the left shoulder of Witt. Tobias near side, three wide outs to the far side. Witt looking far side, under some pressure by Luis, steps away from that, throws it back across his body, finds a receiver complete up to the 45, moves the chains, third down and eight, first and 10, Shawan. Just not, not a good situation. I know we keep harping on that, harping on it, but what are you going to do? If you can't get off the field on third down, you can't keep relying on your defensive front. Uh, you And your front is rotating once again. Luis out of the game. He had just a bit of a jersey of Witt that time, but couldn't haul him in. Witt looking left, and he's looking to throw deep. He's got a man out there. It's complete 30 to the 25 and out of bounds. Sorry, big first down, and that is Lawrence King. The uh, defensive back that time for the Pioneers was Jordan Taylor. He never turned around, and if he does, he has a pick. Yeah, Jordan uh, Taylor, as you say, didn't even look back. It just went right over his head and over his shoulder, right into the hands of the receiver and moving deep into Tuscan territory. Shawan has picked up two big third downs on this drive, and they move it into Pioneer territory to the 22-yard line. This will be a running play, and this is going to be uh, fairly, I think, inside the 20 it is and down to the 19-yard line. So he's going to pick up three. going to bring up second down at seven. As we end the third quarter. End of three, Shawan marching toward the goal line, which would potentially tie the game. At the end of three, it's Tunchkillum 24 and Shawan 17. Pioneer football continues after this from Pioneer Field. Patriots Day on the Pioneer Sports Network. We are in Grange County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help, and we love what we do, and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are, and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. For Shawan, 283 yards offensively to the Pioneers, 198. Shawan has thrown for 213, Tuskegee just 103 here in this football game, and the Pioneers have rushed for 95, Shawan for 70. So, uh, again, outgaining the Pioneers 
in this game after the Pioneers offensively last week goes over 500 yards against St. Augustine's. They have had zero here in the second half. And, and that's that's where Tuscombe has to step up. The secondary did a really good job with those two interceptions, one return for a touchdown in the first half. But right now, it's that's where the game is changing in Shawan's favor. They're being outgained in the second half, 113-4, to four, I should say, in yards. Witt's under pressure, and he's just going to throw it incomplete. Under pressure by Craig Watts, who comes on a middle blitz. Witt pump fake to the left and then threw back to the right, and he had Watkins out there. But he had to dump it off so quickly that Watkins didn't even turn to see and locate the ball. It's third down again for Shawan. Boy, they have a weapon as a kicker for sure. Well within his range. But they are down seven with an entire quarter to play here in the Pioneers home opener. Third down and seven at the 19 for Witt and the Hawks. Back to pass under pressure on a blitz. And Witt is going to be actually dropped at the line of scrimmage. Craig Watts finally got to him. He circled the wagons, if you will. And seven it will be fourth down and seven. And it looks as if the Witt kicking team will the be Hawks. out. Back and the to pass under pressure on the blitz. Well, I mean, it's and as Witt as is going to be actually that, dropped uh, at the, the line of scrimmage. Craig Watts the finally stadium, got so to him. He circled the wagons. hand up or do something to make sure he's not on target. And, and really what I like about it, it's not that it's a driven ball. It is up high immediately. All right, so this will be a, unofficially a 36-yard effort from the far hash. Witt is the holder. Snap, hold is down. Kick is up. This is more of a line drive, and this one is missed. He's actually pulled this one, and it's no good. So he makes from 47, but misses from 36. And so the Pioneers do get a stop. It, it was too easy for him. Yeah, it's just, it was. It was just too easy. You know, needed to back up so. no It's so much momentum going. So it will be first and 10. This Pioneer offense has four yards in this second half, four yards in the third quarter. And I need to make something happen here. Corbin, 103 yards passing, 97 yards rushing. Really no one else involved in the running game to this point. And in the backfield is going to be Courtney Jackson. The offensive line has just not been able to open up the hole, and a lot of that is because of Abdul Wahid and Ivan Staples uh, stapling themselves in the middle of that defensive front. All right, now the Pioneers have got to get some sort of scoring drive because you know Shawan is – they keep knocking on the door. They're going to score again, so the Pioneers have to do something to make sure they stay out front. So Corbin will work it from the gun. Hand it off to Courtney Jackson, and he'll try to move it upfield. A late flag comes in. And maybe because Jackson had two or three yards, this will be a hold likely as he ran around the left end. And Abdul Wahid, who made the stop, I think was the man who was being held in the process. It's difficult for me to see from this angle, you know, looking through all the way across the field, but it, it is in the situation of where you would typically see a hold. They have looked over to the Shawan bench. And so that will be the case. And uh, unfortunately, it will go against Theobald. And again, he's dealing with a, a force in Abdul Wahid. So back him up 10 yards. And it'll bring up first down to 20. Don't have to get it all back at one time. But it'll be nice to have a little bit of an explosive play here on this drive to kind of set the mood better for this Pioneer offense, who has not had a lot to be excited about here in the second half. Corbin to pass, and this pass is going to be complete for a gain of about five, and that is just as Parham. And after his 35-yard touchdown catch, he has been uh, hemmed up nicely by Jabez Gorman, who made that stop, a young freshman from Greensboro. Uh, just think about this. The Pioneers had more forward yardage in that play than they did all of the third quarter combined. Yeah, gain of five. But it brings up second down, actually gain of seven, they say. So second down about uh, 13 from the 17-yard line. Uh, pardon me. Yeah, that's true. Corbin to pass under pressure. Wahid will bring him down. Abdul Wahid with his second sack, and he is just starting to have his way with the Pioneer front. And it, that's just backing the Pioneers up and playing right into Shawan's hands what Tuscombe did in that third quarter. They couldn't move the ball, but they kept using field position and punting to back the Hawks up. Now, Shawan has turned the tables, and that's what they're doing to Tuscombe. That time, Tremaine Chapman just could not keep Abdul Wahid out of the backfield. 
And Corbin now in this offense facing third down and 23 with 12 and a half to play in the game. Tusculum does lead 24-17, just doesn't feel that way. This will be a handoff, safe play here. Maurice Gamillion across the 10, and he'll take it up near the 13-yard line and get the yardage lost after the sack, but it's going to be fourth and 13 on the play. So Andrew Cantrell will be out, will be kicking it to the very dangerous Lawrence King. Yeah, right now we, we've seen some great uh, punts by Cantrell. We saw his season best earlier today. He needs another one right now. And he has kicked the ball well his last two punts, but he'll be kicking, kicking from his own end zone this time. And again, an offense that uh, just goes backwards, uh, you know, on that last drive. So uh, they're losing yards. They have one yard completely now total for the, uh, the second half. This will be a low liner, and it will actually surprise Des Arthur. And uh, a little extra after the play as well. But Arthur was running down to cover up the play. And now punches are going to be thrown. And still no flags. But a lot of jawing at the end of this. So it'll be first and 10 for Shawan at midfield. All right, and that's bad break again for the Pioneers because they would have gotten a, at least another four or five yards worth of roll on that. But unfortunately, it bounced right up into the hands of one of the down field guys. Yeah, it surprised him. And he tried to get out of the way. And before he could, he realized, well, it's hit my shoulder. So right at midfield at the Shawan 49 is where the Hawks will take over first and 10 down, 24 to 17 here in the fourth quarter. And they've had much of the offensive momentum and no offensive any momentum whatsoever for the Pioneer offense in this second half. So it'll be Witt who will line up in the gun, bring a man in motion across the formation and keep him in the backfield really. And they'll throw it back to him for a double pass. Looking downfield to a man who's all alone. Caught it at the 10, to the 5, to the house. Trick play has us an extra point away from being tied. Just, Lawrence King. Not a pretty uh, second pass there by Shawan, but an effective second pass. And as you say, they're setting up getting ready to tie the football game. Demetrius Moore on the pass complete to Lawrence King. It covers 49, 51 yards. And Shawan is into the end zone with the chance to tie this thing up. As a matter of fact, McCatmany, who missed the field goal on the last attempt, on the last offensive series, is a kick away of potentially having the lead, but that's not the way it'll be, obviously. So the snap, the hold, and the kick is up, and it's good. So we're tied. We go to a break. 11.30 to play in the game. It's time for the Pioneer offense to wake up. Tusculum 24, Chawan 24. Pioneer football continues after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us. Johnson City Toyota is the number one Toyota dealership in the Tri-Cities because we make buying simple. First, we discount every vehicle every day, and we stand behind what we sell with a lifetime warranty. For more, simply go to johnsoncitytoyota.com. Family. Food's here! What's it mean to you? To us, it means the people you care about, look out for, and yeah, love even if you'd never let them hear you say it. Hey, you're eating hummus? What's wrong with hummus? Here at Ingalls, we have everything you need to gather around the table and give each other a hard time. Because that's what families do. Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Last week is good enough for sixth in the country. After today, those numbers are going to uh, be skewed. 334 yards of offense for Shawan, just 201 yards of offense for the Pioneers so far on the day. And this Pioneer offense here in the second half now officially with seven yards of offense. Yeah, I mean, you just have to think back to that injury to Maurice Camillion. Pioneers have not had the opportunity to be just a real dual threat, take him and his 100 yards away that he got last week. And it's making a difference so far. Corbin has been the dual threat. He had 103 yards rushing today. He is now, right now, sitting at 87. If that gives you any indication as to how the second half is going. Yeah, absolutely. 
McCantney will get sent to uh, kick it away. He drilled the last one at, through the end zone. And this one will be high and short and returnable for the Pioneers. From the five, 10, 15, 20, and a penalty flag goes in behind the play, and two penalty flags go in behind the play, and more talking and more jawing. As that return was, I think, Jarvis Jones, the redshirt freshman out of Fort Myers, Florida. So two penalty flags on the play. And trying to get Jarvis Jones free on the return. We'll just figure out what's going on. Tied at 24, that last scoring drive. Took just a play, 51 yards. It was a double throw. Demetrius Moore to Lawrence King. Holding going against the Pioneers. So back them up. Instead of having the football starting here at uh, about your own 25 or wherever it was going to be, they're going to get backed up and now be right at the 10-yard line. Uh, here's, here's the thing with this group right now. This offense has got to, to find a drive. Got to be able to go. And uh, why they're not is because of the guys up front for Shawan. Abdul Wahid Staples have not allowed anything. And right now, Staples out of the game. And Keyshawn Douglas into the contest. So Corbin out of the gun. It'll be Corbin who's just going to keep it, trying to get around the right end, and he's not going to be able to get there. And that's just a Monte, Montre Moore, the junior from San Bernardino, Bernardino, California, who comes up with the stop. With the line of scrimmage, the 10, he's going to lose a yard. Yeah, I don't know what you want to do. You've already lost yardage on the penalty. Now you're uh, losing yardage on your first play, just trying to, you know, play safely or something. I'm not sure. And Tusculum, who has led 7-0, tied at 7, led 21-7. Then led 24 to 14. Now we're tied at 24. Corbin to throw. He's looking to go deep to Parham. Parham trying to come back for the ball, and a penalty is going to bail him out. That's a good call. And the, the uh, defender does not believe that for Shawan, C Caleb Hester. But Parham, who if he keeps running, probably keeps going, but he tried to come back for the ball. He was not allowed to. That's usually a flag. And, and once again, whenever the defender knocks the intended wide receiver to his backside, you got to have to call that. And Parham still almost caught it. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty. So fortunate for the Pioneers. They get some breathing room here. Corbin just kind of let it go. But they're not taking their shots downfield because Corbin doesn't have the time to throw the ball downfield. And it's been good coverage for the most part in the secondary for Shawan. Corbin will work again from the gun. Courtney Jackson is in the backfield. Corbin, play action pass across the middle, complete Parham, 35 and up to the 40. A little momentum, and there's a pickup of 14, first and 10 for the Pioneers. Well, we've seen Shawan use uh, penalties and big plays Courtney to get Jackson momentum, and now the hopefully the Pioneers are moving Corbin, fast. Corbin, play the action same. pass Pioneers across the middle, with some complete tempo. Parham, 35 and up to the, the 40. This will be a Courtney little Jackson. momentum, and there's a pickup of 14, up to the 14, first and 10. I don't mind that. Just a couple of yards, second down and eight. But I want to see Jackson break a tackle and get in the secondary and be dangerous. Yeah, you need to open that hole just a little bit more for him because if, if he would have rolled on outside, maybe he could have gotten into space, but he went right where it closed up. Clock runs, game tie. 10-15 on the clock. We're tied at 24. Corbin out of the gun. Jackson stays in the backfield. Two wide outs to the near side for the Pioneers. Corbin waiting for the snap from Mahoney. Gets it. Play action again. This pass to the near side of Jero, complete at the 45, makes a man miss there and gets to the 50 and into Shawan territory and takes it down to the 49 yard line. To the line. near and side of Jero, complete at the, the 45, Finally, makes a man miss there and gets to the 50 and into Shawan territory. The the and into Shawan territory. Slowing back down now, waiting on everything to get set. But they've got to get down and put some points on the board. Parham to the far side. It will be Derek Wright and Ajero to this near side. It'll be Schellenbeck, the tight end, set to the right. Jackson in the backfield. This will be Corbin, straight, straight drop, throwing it deep. This pass incomplete, intended for Derek Wright. He airmailed him. He had him open, just wasn't accurate, second and ten. Yeah, just ball way overthrown. It's, it's had no way to jump up and go after it. Second down, Pioneers. Want to see this, uh, maybe one of the most talented wide receiving cores this, this team has had with the addition of Will Sweeper and Jackson Boone and Darian Anderson as the uh, kind of the backups. 
And Jarvis Jones, going to be dangerous as well for this Pioneer team, Trey Burke. Nine and a half to play in the game, tied at 24. Blitz comes, it's picked up, throwing it deep, and this is going to be Parham, and penalty flags are thrown. That's a good call again. Parham is unable to get free. And on this far sideline, Lawrence to King, wide receiver, game, tied at 24. talking it up a Blitz bit with comes, Parham as well. Up, it could be a hold, it could be pass interference. This is going to be, deep, could going be, to be Parham, and penalty flags are thrown. Yeah, That's a good call again. Parham is unable. Well, he was held first, yeah. and then he was pass interfered with. So, pass interference will be the call. So, it'll be an automatic first down. It was not 15 yards downfield. It was about uh, 14 yards. So, Kyrie Burns, 6-2. And, again, these corners are physical. Kyrie's going to come to this near side. On the far side is Keyshawn Pickett. He's 6-3. So from the Shawan 36-yard line, first and 10 for the Pioneers. Blitz, Corbin running, scrambling, throwing, and this one incomplete. Was looking for Derek Wright again. And we've got just uh, humanity, just a – we got guys down, offensive linemen, defensive linemen. Second down and 10 at the 36. Uh, we got a guy that's – more than just down. Yeah, he's he's really struggling. And I don't think it, he's struggling to stand, but I don't think that that's necessarily a leg injury. No, it is not leg related. We're going to have an injury timeout. We're going to step aside. We'll return to Pioneer Field, Patriots Day. It's 9.15 to play. It's Tusculum 24. It's Shawan 24. Pioneer football returns after this injury timeout on the Pioneer Sports Network. Broken windshield, take one. Hey guys, my windshield just got broken. I feel like I need to blow off some steam. Let's go. One, two, three. Mr. Blanks, <laughs> there's no need to be stressed. Geico makes it easy to file a claim online, on the app, or over the phone. Yeah, but what if I never hear back? That's gonna make me want to go, jet, jet. Nope, your Geico claims team is always there for you. That makes me want to celebrate with some fireworks. Five, six, seven, go. Boom, 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 boom. Geico, great service without all the drama. So much of life these days is rushing around from one place to another. Sometimes you just want to enjoy the journey on the way to the destination. And part of what makes it a little more enjoyable is an appreciation for the folks who help you get there. At Ingalls, we know that the people who send you on your way are the same ones who keep you coming back. I think you should take it for a spin. Are you serious? <laughs> Ingalls, all the ingredients for family. Brian Staten and Joe. For Basilio Fernandez, the injured Shawan Hawk. Off the field with some assistance. Second down and 10 for the Pioneers out of the timeout. Corbin rolling the pocket to the near side. Looking, he's got a guy, he'll just throw it. This pass tipped and incomplete. Derek right in the same area with Tyler Agero. He had Parham under the coverage all alone. 20 yards downfield, and Corbin just didn't see him. Yeah, Parham was wide open. There was nobody within 10 yards of him in any direction. So a terrible break there for the Pioneers. And then almost the miraculous catch by Derek Wright. I, and honestly, I, I'm pretty sure it would have been ruled because he, I think he was, he was out. out. And then, well, he, he would not have been the first person to touch it. A zero touch. That's true. So third down and 10. From the 36, Pioneers have not converted on third downs today. They were fantastic last week. That has not been the case today. They are 1 for 11. Third down and 10 from the 36. Empty backfield for Corbin. They show blitz. They back off into coverage. And Corbin, as Abdul Wahid had him and then lost him, gets a little extra time. He's going to loft it downfield and out of play. Incomplete. So a lot of running for Corbin in the game. It is fourth down with under nine to play and another injured player. 
And uh, another defensive lineman, Ray Darius Freeman. Third year sophomore out of Bellhaven, North Carolina. So decision time here for this Pioneer football team. And you give the ball back to Shawan. They've just um, trick played you for a score to tie the game. They, that's the only way to get through, I think, Jerry Odom's defense. And I think for uh, Odom, you know, the way offenses are anymore, you know, you're going to have to score 27 points to win, minimum. Yeah, absolutely. You take a look, Shawan. Last week, uh, they scored 30 in overtime to, to win against Mars Hill. The Pioneers, they won big, obviously, but the defense also stepped up last week. So it is, for me, one of the situations, I, I think really the first person to 25 wins a game, the way uh, offenses are able to play and, and compete. So right now, I think in this situation, fourth and 10 at the Shawan 36, I mean, it's tight to punt it, but really I would like the fact that you would come and punt here. I, I, the reason I like that is because Cantrell does a really good job pinning the opposition inside of the 10. 27 game career, 141 punts, 5,300 yards. 40 career punts inside the 20. Third best by a pioneer. That's why I like it. Because he can pin you deep and rely on your defense to keep a short field potentially. But the pioneers will go for it here. And this is dangerous because then you give Shawan a chance. And Shawan's going to call a timeout. That's their first timeout of the second half. And I almost wish you would reconsider it here to give the opportunity for your defense to come out and make a play. Your defense has scored a touchdown today. Well, I mean, if you do any kind of punter, you're going to have to trust on Cantrell, maybe go coffin corner because yes. if you put it in the end zone, you've really only benefited your defense by 11 yards. So, right. it's, it's got to be a directional punch. You couldn't really just try to throw your pitching wedge hit in there inside the five. Which is why I like Cantrell in this situation, because I think he, he can do that in this in, when he's punting inside his own territory, inside his the opposition's territory, the right side of the 50 from where we see it. But either way, it's neither here nor there. If we get this first down on fourth down, I'll be like, yeah, that's exactly what we should have done. <laughs> All right, so next week the Pioneers will open up conference play against Limestone. They defeated Limestone in the regular spring season, you could say, and that was the only home game the Pioneers here. So they get Limestone again. That game was supposed to be played at one. I guess Limestone didn't get a hotel, and it's race weekend, Bristol. So they asked if we could move it back so they could make a trip up and a trip back all in one day. We'll do that next week, 3 o'clock kick. Fourth and 10 out of this Shawan timeout. Corbin with the snap. Back to pass. Delivers incomplete. Never had enough. It was one hopped all the way to Derek Wright. It's a turnover on downs. And Shawan right now is the best team here in this second half. No, they really are. They've been moving the football. They haven't scored a whole lot, but they haven't needed to score a whole lot because Tusculum has done nothing. Tusculum now officially over 200 yards of offense, though, 227. But now the defense being asked for a big ask. Stop Shawan. First ever meeting between these programs. Shawan, a preseason number two pick out of the CIAA North with, pre with the all-conference second team quarterback, Bryce Witt. Makes sense. Touch to them preseason number four pick in the conference. Witt out of the gun. We'll hand it off. This will be uh, Boyd. He'll run it right side, and he'll take it up to the 40-yard line and maybe a gain of about four there on the stop for the Pioneers, Xavier Clements. Gain of four, second and six. You know, you mentioned this first-ever meeting, and it's like some of this chippiness I've seen today has been really surprising. The two teams Very don't have a history. The no players history. certainly don't have a history. But yet, I mean, right from the very first quarter, it's just been these guys going after each other. So second down and six coming up for the Hawks. Tie game, tied at 24. Watkins to the right, to the near side is Lawrence King. Two dangerous wide outs. King will go in motion to the far side. And Tusculum is gonna call a timeout. Their second defensive timeout of the half in a tie game. It's got to just drive you crazy. Yeah, let's just hope that the uh, Pioneers don't come back to regret that and wish they had them in an offensive situation later here in the contest. 
Let's take a quick break. Back in 30 seconds. 6.01 to play in the game. We're tied at 24. Did you know that you can set up your green line and power bill to be Four. Out of the timeout by the Pioneers. So second down and six. Shawan with the football from their own 40. In motion across the formation to the left side. A screen set up complete. 45. 50. This will be Watkins to the Pioneer 45-yard line. When you go to the quarterback unabated, stop and turn around. Yeah, because, I mean, the Pioneers, why they have about four to five of those orange jerseys just going straight with the quarterback dropping up. So that means that somebody was going to be standing where you were and nobody's going to be guarding. Well, you're already in McCatney's field goal range. And you're only at the Pioneer 44. A kid can boom it. First and 10. And the Hawks with the momentum. Hand it off. This is going to be McNeil inside the 40, and he'll take it down to the 38-yard line. And that will be a gain of about eight. Bring up a second down and seven. Actually, yeah, a gain of seven, second down and three, coming up for Shawan. Defense needs to try to really step up. Shawan probably content to run the ball a whole lot right here to try to eat the clock up, knowing that Pioneers only have one timeout left. So seven minutes to play and running. Witt will work out of the gun. McNeil set behind him. With the snap, Witt's going to keep it, run around right in, but he's not going to get very far. As a nice job once again by Kamari Lovett. Gain of about, well, not even a half yard. We're just going to say third down and three. So a big moment right here for Shawan. And you're in that gray area, just like Tusculum was moments ago. You're at the opposition's 37. But Love it, just does, continues to do a good job. May have to call on him again this play. Witt will have McNeil on his left shoulder. Third down and three at the Pioneer 37 yard line. High snap. Witt is going to keep it, and there is Love it, but he can't bring him down. Witt will fight through the tackle inside the 35 to the 33, and it'll be a first and 10 on third down and short, where I think it was actually Jihad Russ and Lovett that could not bring down the 220 pounder. They had Witt hit at or behind the line, and now Shawan's moving to change. So under six to play in the game, and Shawan on the move. They have been on the move all second half. And just been really smart about what they've done as well offensively. Taking care of the football, not turned it over like they did in the first half. This will be Witt, play action, rolling it out to the right side and throwing it downfield incomplete. Watkins just really couldn't ever get going. There is a flag at the line of scrimmage. Illegal man downfield. So... The illegal man downfield will move him back five yards. It remains first down, but first and 15. Back at the 39-yard line. And now you really truthfully... You know, you, you want all the best. This defense has asked Ben... You've been asking this defense to do a lot much of this game, and now you need them to do a little bit more. You know, I was kind of confused there. He said it remains second down, like, but it was first down, so is it loss of down? Which one does it remain? But right. we got it corrected. It's yeah. first down. Witt will line up out of the gun, send Watkins in motion. They'll hand it off to McNeil this time around the right end. He's broken a tackle at the 30, to the 25, at the 20, at the 10, at the 5, and into the end zone. He broke it 
and broke contain and into the end zone, and for the first time, Shawan leads. Shawan leads here today with 525 remaining whenever Tuscanum gets the football back. Breaking around the right end, he broke two tackles and then had the breakaway speed to get into the end zone. And right now, Shawan, all sorts of momentum, an offense that has done little to nothing here in this second half, is going to be asked to do a lot more. And apparently there was some infraction and an unsportsmanlike against Shawan. It'll be a 15-yard penalty on the kickoff, which is awesome for Tusculum because that can potentially give them some really good field position. All right, right now this touchdown does stand. Shawan's up 30-24 kicking for the extra point. So McCatney will attempt the extra point, looking to make it a seven-point game and looking uh, to uh, make it 31 to 24. Snap, hold, kick is up and good. So we go to a break, new score. And for the first time in the game, Shawan leads. 525 left, Shawan 31, Tusculum 24. Pioneer football will continue after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? So six plays, 64 yards, 321 off of the clock. And Tyreek McNeil around right in into the end zone as he scores from 39 yards away. And so very tough for this uh, Pioneer team, this uh, defense to give up those points. 31-24, Shawan wins last week 30-24 to in overtime against Mars Hill. And so 15 yards further back, McCapney will be kicking it away. Corbin, 13 of 27. He's thrown for just 135 today. He's rushed for 86. He is the leading rusher. And somebody's got to do something else on the offensive side. McCapney will kick it away. End over end. Jackson drifting back, fielding it at the 15. Check that's Jarvis Jones. Far side return, 25. Penalty flag down 30. 35-40. And he'll go out of bounds around the 40, but it won't matter. This is coming way back. And where you thought you were going to have good fit starting field position, you're going to be backed up right around the 20. Yeah, that uh, penalty on the, uh, the Hawks, all for naught, whenever the Pioneers have one just like it themselves. So Tusculum has to muster a drive down seven. Not only do they trail for the first time in this game, they trail for the first time this season after jumping out on St. Augustine's last week, 44 to nothing. And Shawan out of the CIAA. Tusculum 8 and 4 all time against the CIAA. Yeah, right now, if they want to make that 9 and 4 instead of 8 and 5, they're going to have to get something together and get into this end zone. And the last time they lost to a CIAA opponent, 2016, we went to Virginia State. And the Pioneers were beaten 24 to 10. Here it's 31 to 24. Ivan Corbin in the offense with Courtney Jackson in the backfield who's gone pretty much the entire way here in this second half. He's going to get a carry here. Breaks away from Abdul Wahid at the 20. Takes a big, vicious hit at the 25-yard line and will go down there after a gain of five, and that's Montre Moore, who has been the team's leading tackler today. And Jackson gets up and is apparently okay, but we'll check out. Yeah, and that was uh, a lot of work, a lot of effort, and a lot of punishment for five yards. Five years will go with five wide outs this time. As into the contest will be Derek Wright along with Hajero to the far side. Schellenbeck, Gamillion is in the slot, and Parham is the wideout near side. Empty backfield for Corbin. 
Quick pass is going to be complete at the 25, or pardon me, the 35-40. And up across the 45 to the 48-yard line goes Tyler Ajero. It'll move the chains first and 10. Yeah, great play. Uh, uh, empty backfield for Corbin. Some of that earlier Quick pass is going to be complete well, at the 25. Up, or pardon me, the 35 decisive, And it was and accurate. Up across the 45 to the 48-yard line but goes Tyler Ajero. It's just he's just not been able to get the ball to today. This will be a play action pass. Ajero to the near side this time, down to the 45 yard line, to the 44 yard line. It'll be a gain of nine, bring up second down and a yard. The Pioneers come with a little tempo again. And that's what uh, it's actually been their, their bread and butter here in the fourth quarter. When they have moved the ball well, it's been because of that tempo. Down seven, they need it in the end zone as we go under four to play in the game with just one timeout remaining. Pioneers have had to burn two defensive timeouts here in the half and on the opening drive of the second half, they had to. Corbin working out of the gun. Under some pressure, delivers the pass across the middle, complete Derek Wright, sure-handed catch across the 40 and down to the 39. Under It'll the move gun. the chains, first and 10 on a pickup of five. Under some pressure, Does delivers the, the pass so across the middle, the complete Derek Wright, sure-handed catch. Not going quick tempo this play. So Corbin coming up to the line of scrimmage. And, you know, I don't, Shawan's not allowing them to come down the field, but uh, their pressure has definitely been slowed. 3.20 on the clock, it runs. The handoff is Maurice Gamillion, and the uh, running game has not taken off today outside of Ivan Corbin breaking free for a couple of runs. Gamillion picks up maybe two. As a matter of fact, the longest rush for a running back has been six yards today. Well, I didn't even think about those uh, long runs by Corbin. I don't necessarily think they were set up as runs. They were busted plays, and he was just able to make something happen. Second down and eight, under three minutes to play in the game. The Pioneers trail by seven. And uh, Abdul Wahid comes across the line of scrimmage. And I don't know if he was drawn off because everything happened so quick. But this may be a free five for the Pioneers. No indication yet exactly what we're going to do. We're looking towards Shawan. It is. So it's offside. They were trying to uh, jump the play count. Did not do so successfully. So 250 on the clock. Stops for just a moment. 31 24. Shawan's played an overtime game already this year. <laughs> Second down. Second down and three. And the handoff this time is Gamillion, and he'll pound his way across the 30 and down to the 28-yard line, which will move the chains. First and 10 for the Pioneers on a gain of four. And that takes Tuscan down to the 28. The Pioneers now slow down a little bit, looking over to the sideline and the coaching staff to get their play. So Corbin out of the gun. Three wide outs in the formation. Gamillion running hard here this second half. Blitz comes. Corbin avoids it. Looking downfield, he's got a man open. It's a Jero complete inside the 15 and down to the 13-yard line. It'll move the chains again. It'll be first and 10 at the 14. Million running right now, hard here in the second half. Blitz comes. Corbin avoids it. Looking downfield, he's got a man open. It's a Jero complete inside the 15 open. and down to the 13-yard line. It'll move. Rolling to his right, almost short hop that ball, but he did First down and 10, and again movement, free play. Tusculum will pass to the far sideline. That'll be a Jero, and he'll take it inside the five and be escorted out of bounds inside the five-yard line. And it'll be about a yard shy of the first. So uh, what do we do here? Do we go first and five, or do we go second and a yard? I'm going to say second and a yard. So second down and a yard. And really, Shawan quit playing. If Cor Ball spotted right on the five-yard line. Uh, clock is stopped at the minute 56 left in this contest. So the officials are going to discuss it. I don't know what they're discussing. Still discussing. The penalty... Yeah, the ball goes out of bounds. They will start on the snap. They, and I think that's what they were trying to decide. All right, we take the play, so we start on the snap. All right, so Bryce Moore is in at quarterback, and he is your physical, hard-run, hard-nosed pounder. It's almost like a wildcat formation. 
And it is, and Moore's going to go right up the middle, but run right into the teeth of that defense for Shawan looking for the first down. And I don't he, he barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I mean, that's a situation whenever you, you change out a quarterback like that, you're sort of signaling what you're going to do, and he's lined up five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, he moved forward five yards, but he just got back to where the ball was. Beef is out there for the Pioneers. Dexler Benjamin to the left side, and that's the way Moore will run. He'll spin out of a tackle, and he's going to get the first. Second effort for Bryce Moore will give the Pioneers first and goal inside the four-yard line. And that's the way Moore will run. He'll spin out of a tackle and he's going to get the first. Just second, second, effort second effort for yeah, Bryce really Moore. So that was a good job by Moore there to help get the uh, first down. The Pioneers now have four shots to get it into the end zone with 122 and counting. So it'll be Moore again in at quarterback. Three wide outs to this near side. Benjamin and H back to the left. Moore will show pass, lower the shoulder and run forward, and he'll take it down to the one yard line. There's Connor O'Brien with that stop, but now just a yard pass, away lower from the, the end shoulder zone and a potential tie. And he'll game. take it down right, to the we'll one yard the, line. There's Connor the O'Brien with that. As, as we go forward here, under a minute to play. Moore wants it quickly. He's going to get the ball. He's going to lunge for the end zone. He's going to be in. Touchdown, Tusculum. Touchdown, Bryce Moore. Touching pay dirt from a yard. Right, 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 Under a minute off to off play. Moore wants it quickly. He's going to get the ball. He's going to lunge for the end zone. He's going to be Jerry in. Oda. Touchdown, Tusculum. Touchdown, and Bryce Moore. To go for two he for has. the win. But right now, let's just make sure we let's get it. Let's make sure down. we tie. Yeah, make sure we tie. With 48 seconds to play in the game, best Touching driver of the from a yard. for Tusculum. And a point away from a potentially an overtime situation. Shepard out, snap, hold, kick. Cantrell had problems with it, but the point is good. We're tied. 48 seconds left. We'll kick when we return. It's Tusculum 31, Shawan 31. Pioneer football continues after this on the Pioneer Sports Network. The Pioneers go 12 plays, 80 yards, 427 off the click, off the clock. You needed a, uh, a a scoring drive, and the Pioneers get it. Bryce Moore from a yard to get into the end zone. Now at 302 yards of offense, and all of their their offense in the second half in the last two drives. Yeah, and this thing is far from over. Pioneers absolutely once they, they kick us off, the defense have got to step up for the next 48 seconds or whatever's on the clock over there. Gonzalez to kick it away. It'll be fielded by the very dangerous Imeek Watkins. Fields it at the 20, 25, still on his feet, crossing the 30, 35. And I think a flag came in late. And there is a flag. And that could potentially be a face mask as he's brought down at the 36-yard line. And if it's a face mask, all you need is about 10 yards to give the kicker for Shawan any chance. Yeah, I mean, that's why I say this is – the defense has got to hold. And – this is not a good way to start it. All right, there is no foul for a horse collar is what they were looking at. Whew. So first and 10 at the 36 still. Tesculum does have a pick six in this football game. They also have another interception. I mean, the Pioneers have to be ready for anything. You can't really just drop back into a prevent defense to, you know, prevent the long pass because of the dangerousness of the kicking game yeah. for Shawan. They've got to hold them pretty much where they are. Witt with Fairley in the backfield. McNeil ran for 39 yards and a score on the last running play that Shawan ran. Witt with the snap back to pass. Cross the middle. It's tipped, and it's nearly intercepted. Ryan McIntyre got a piece of it across the middle. Ran. 
And it almost went right into with, the with hands. With the snap back to pass. Cross the one, middle. It's tipped and it's nearly intercepted. As it is incomplete. Second down and 10 with 37 seconds Ryan to play. Mack. Clock did stop when the ball hit the ground. Shawan has two timeouts remaining. So it will be wet out of the gun. Back to pass. Under some pressure. Steps up in the pocket. Delivers downfield. And this one is almost picked off. Incomplete. Trawick almost had that one. Get another play or two like this, and the Pioneers may have a shot at offense again. Third down and 10, and again, just kind of lofted over the top of the defense. And the secondary had a real legitimate shot at that. Just could not pull all the way in. So 31 seconds to play, third down and 10, tied at 31. Back to pass, Witt, crossing pattern complete. Watkins, he's going to be brought down shy of the line to gain at about the 43. Tycorian Brown with the tackle. And the offense is going to stay out there for at least the second. And a timeout, Jerry Odom with 18 seconds to play. Odom going to call the timeout. Shawan would have had an opportunity to run out the clock had they chosen to, but they set up like they were going to run a play, so Coach Odom had to burn that last timeout. So he calls the timeout, and uh, Shawan may then bring the punt team out and potentially try to send this thing uh, into uh, overtime. There would be some time for the Pioneers, but the, their explosive play was the what the, in the first drive, the 35-yard uh, pass play and a 35-yard running play. That all came on the very first drive of this game. So obviously a bit of a different situation going on on that far sideline because they just forced Tusculum to burn their final time. That's just head. That's also a great. That's a great call. You keep the yeah. offense out. You burn their final time out. You yeah. force them to burn it. So Tusculum and Shawan tied at 31. The other thing is Tusculum needed the drive and got the drive to get the tying at score after they had struggled here offensively in this second half. So back deep to receive, going to be Cannon Hall. Or Alana to punt it. It's a good punt. Hall going to watch it go out of bounds inside the 20 near the 15-yard line. Now right now, if you're Tuscan, are you the content to take a knee, or do you at least take one, one deep shot right. down the field? You have 12 seconds. You're tied at 31 at home, Patriots Day. You are staring overtime square in the face. Give me your fastest guy and let him get down the field. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I, and I absolutely just make sure whatever you do, if there's some sort of interception, you don't let them run it back <laughs> on you. And it's got to be deep. That's not what the Pioneers will do. They'll play for overtime. Shawan, for the second sec consecutive week, will take a South Atlantic Conference team into an overtime frame, where this year the new overtime rules will have you, you must go for two after the second overtime. For Jerry Odom, that typically doesn't matter. He just, he goes for the win. The Pioneers will go to take a knee and send this game into the extra session. We go to a break. At the end of regulation, it is Tusculum 31, Shawan 31. Our Pioneer football and overtime will be here next on the Pioneer Sports Network. Tusculum University is Tennessee's first university. Established in 1794, Tusculum's beautiful campus is nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. Students from 31 states and 15 countries have found a home here. With nearly 60 areas of study, Tusculum can help you pioneer your path to success. Visit www.tusculum.edu or call 423-636-7300 to discover the pioneer experience for yourself. We are in Grange County, Tennessee, here at Pierce Farms, and uh, the Pierce family has been working with Ingalls for over 30 years. It means a great deal supplying uh, produce as a local farmer. Uh, it really touches base knowing that we're just simple people just trying to help, and we love what we do, and Ingalls is a huge part of helping us do it. Farming is who we are, and it's in our blood. God has really blessed us with the sun and the soil to grow the best tomatoes you'll find anywhere. <laughs> I believe it's really in the soil. 
So if you're in Granger County and you farm tomatoes, then you're, you're in. <laughs> Just a great blessing on us to actually farm and be able to farm and to supply tomatoes to people. And Ingalls really cares about family farms like Pierce Farms, and they really care about their customers. We're just glad to be a part of that. God has blessed us with a really great partnership there. They make fresh local produce have real meaning for lots of people. I'm Shane Pierce, and this is my Ingalls story. The Pioneers will go to overtime. Jerry Odom must love it. Must love some overtime play. Pioneers went three overtimes against LR in 2015. So, Tush so Shawan has won the toss, and they've elected to go on defense, and Tushkillum will have the football first. Tushkillum went to overtime with Virginia Wise. Jerry's first game was at the first game of the year that season, two overtime loss, 13 to 10 to Virginia Wise. Went against Mars Hill later that year, lost 28-27. And then, but the big overtime game we all remember in 2016, his first year, was the overtime win against Carson Newman, where they went to overtime. Went for two and got it. We went to Limestone, he lost. And that was the year that they had Ivan Corbin at Limestone. And then uh, 2017, later that season, won 32 to 31. One point game by going for two. Tuskillum will have the football from the 25 yard line as we start this overtime first free. Yeah, that's another one of the, you know, a longer play, but a busted play for the Pioneers. I don't think that's what Corbin was intended, but. His receivers were covered, and he saw a hole, so he took off, and he did get a good game for Tuscan. Again, the overtime rules this year state after the second overtime a touchdown, you must go for two. Second down and three. From the 18, Corbin to pass under pressure is lofting it to the back of the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Pioneers. Touchdown, Derek Wright. Mistiming his play was Keyshawn Pickett, and Wright makes the catch, Second and the Pioneers the score the first the in the Corbin first the overtime. Phenomenal catch by Wright, just leaping up in the back of the end zone, coming down one-handed, but having to pay attention to touchdown where he was to tip Derek to stay in bounds to get this touchdown to put the Pioneers back in the lead. Well, it looked as if Pickett at six foot three was in position to make a play, and he mistimed his jump, but Derek Wright did not. So Shepard to attempt. Snap, hold, eh, whoo. Cantrell had problems with it, but Shepard puts it through either way. And Shepard's been money twice in this bit right here when the game matters. 38-31 now, and, and Shawan will be 18, with their Corbin chance on offense. And they know what they have to do. They have to put it in the end zone. zone. It is caught. Score. Touchdown, so Pioneers. The offense, which has Touchdown, Derek in the second Ryan. Half. Tusculum didn't dominate the first half, but they were the better team in the first half. Uh, they really were. But, I mean, honestly, the defense still played pretty well, except for the big plays they gave up. That's what happened. It's just Tuscombe's offense didn't play as well in the second half as they did the first. So now we've got things going. So we'll see if the defense can step up and win this football game. Well, growing pains, obviously. Two touchdown tosses for Derek Wright. It is his first of the season for the Pioneers. He had two catches, 13 yards last week, and a long of seven. He was big on the touchdown tying coin toss and and who's going to do what again i just thought we flipped that i and that's was my understanding as well because you know that's a normal overtime thing if you were on offense first to go first go around then you're on yeah. all right so anyway we have free football here that's that's fun for the uh, home opener next week pioneers take on limestone it'll be a three o'clock kickoff we believe that has not been officially announced yet but Limestone uh, does not have any rooms, uh, hotel rooms, because of race weekend in Bristol. And so they have asked to move the game back, which is fine. 
Uh, I just uh, Tony Skillam agrees to do these types of things, and uh, if if the if it was the same the other way, I don't know that we'd get the same treatment. Definitely, we didn't get that from LR last year, playing in the spring championship game. So, LR has also moved their game. If you didn't know that, they're gonna we're gonna kick off at one o'clock at Lenore Ryan October 9th. That was originally scheduled for two. It's not that big of a deal, but it's an hour earlier. But it is a one o'clock start for that that particular game. So apparently, just a formality. Shawan. Score heading towards the field house. And I guess that's their option. So we'll flip sides. Defense on the field from the 25. So each team had a chance in the first overtime. Each team scored a touchdown. You know, it seems like this is just a whole lot of time wasting and lack of efficiency in the rules of the game. You know, just figure it out and play. Yeah. We already know what's going on. We already know oh, by the coach coming out to the numbers has not applied today. First down and 10 at the 25. A man in motion, wit to pass. He's under pressure. He throws it across the middle. It's almost picked off. Ryan McIntyre steps in front of Imeek Watkins. Wit didn't see. And Watkins about gave motion. the ball to the offense with a chance to Wit win. Wit to pass. Uh, He's uh, under pressure. He throws it across the middle. It's almost picked off. Ryan McIntyre. Shawan on the uh, first drive of the second overtime. Wit out of the gun. Four wideouts. Tobias will go in motion, come running behind the quarterback. This will be Tobias trying to get outside. He breaks a tackle. He breaks a second tackle. He's going to have the first down. <laughs> he was hit hard behind the line of scrimmage, but he just continued to work his way, and he gets the first down to the 14. Uh, bad break to the Pioneers. They had it wrapped up. Could have been forcing at least a field goal attempt, and now Shawan gets a fresh set of downs here to try to get in the end zone. It has been an entertaining game, if anything, between these two. And not a pushover. The Hawks, the number two team preseason pick out of the CIAA North. Tusculum, the preseason number four pick coming off their spring championship. Witt to snap it. Two seconds on the play clock. Looking to the end zone. Across the middle, this is going to be, did he catch that ball? He did. Down yep. at the one-yard line, what a catch, Lawrence King. He had all sorts of defensive pressure and still was able to hang on to that. These two wide receivers are something special. Uh, it looked as if he was going to have the ball stripped away, but then Witt delivering a rocket of a pass. So here we are, first and goal at the one, and this is pretty much – Wit time, but they'll hand it off to the running back, Lord, uh, Boyd, and he'll get into the end zone. Second effort and into the end zone for Jalen Boyd, the redshirt freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. So, Shawan takes the second overtime advantage. They must go for two here, though. That's the new rule. And then we'll know exactly what Tusculum has to do once the Pioneers get the football back. So Shawan will line up to go for two. Hey, if you want to make it real interesting, the team that has the ball first in the second overtime has to go for two, but the second team, if they score a touchdown, can kick an extra point and win. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Witt out of the gun. This will be pass, screen, double toss, and the two-point conversion is converted. So the double pass rallied from behind, down 14 points in this game. They were down 21-7. to seven. They took the lead in the fourth. Courtney Jackson with the carry. He's going to fumble the football. He's going to get it back. Boy, Abdul Wahid, along with, I think, Isaac Anderson, stripping the ball from Courtney Jackson, and he, was, he smartly falls back on top of it. And right back in. He had picked up two or three yards, if not four. Ball bounced backwards, so the Pioneers essentially are at second and ten. The Pioneers.
trail 46-38 here in the second overtime. Must score a touchdown. Cor Corbin is under a lot of pressure, and he's going to throw this one out of play. Was he out of the pocket? I don't know. Nope. Penalty flag, intentional grounding on the Pioneer is going to back him up again. He got it across the line of scrimmage. There was no one in the area, so it'll be grounding. So back the ball up near midfield, and it will now be third down, and you have two plays to get the ball down to the 15. And actually, you're going back to your own 48-yard line. And Shawan feeling real happy about themselves right now. In this second overtime, leading at 40 by Jerry Odom and the Pioneer offense, the game is at hand. This is where it all matters. For this Pioneer football team. Again, next week against Limestone, this is the start of a three-game homestand. Six home games this year. Love the way the schedule is set up. Three straight home games. You go on the road twice, then you're home twice. You go on the road twice, and then you're home to wrap up the year. And hopefully there's another game after that. And uh, all our road games are within the state of North Carolina this year. <laughs> it's the, it's the uh, North Carolina track this season, which is interesting. At St. Augs. To begin the season last week, October 2nd at Wingate, October 9th at Lenore Ryan, October 20th at uh, it's October 30th at Catawba, and November 6th at Mars Hill. So it, it'll be more or less the South Carolina trek next year with a stop in Virginia, a couple of stops potentially in Virginia, as Emory and Henry will be joining the league. And next year, I believe, is that when we start division play? I think it is next year. That's convoluted. Yeah. So fourth down and 10. The game on this play, and Shawan is going to burn a timeout to get a look at the formation, which hasn't changed a lot. It's three wideouts. It's a uh, quarterback in the spread formation. So another timeout. Coming up at our post game, Pioneer coach Jerry Odom hopefully will be in a good mood after this play. We're not talking about post-game here in about two, two or three minutes. And then this week, the Pioneer football show, the radio show, coming your way Monday night. TV show will be ready for you about Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning through TuscalumPioneers.com. Carry through to Newberry. Of course, Newberry, we lost to to open up spring season last year. And uh, after that loss, Reeled off four consecutive. The Pioneers have won five consecutive games now for the first time since 2014-15. Here we go. Fourth down and ten in the second overtime, down eight. Corbin, and we jump. We jump. We take the timeout. I heard this, the clap from up here. Wanted to get a free five. Instead, we're going to lose five. I really do think a basketball game is broken out. It takes forever to end. So now instead of fourth and 10, it's fourth and 15. Fourth and 15, you've got to get at least a first down to keep this alive. Everything's riding on this play. Corbin, a zero in motion across the formation. Corbin looking down the field. It's in and out of the hands, incomplete. Game over, Shawan wins. Shawan celebrates on that far side. They have knocked off South Atlanta Conference opponents in overtime each of the last two weeks. And we'll travel back to Murfreesboro, North Carolina with a victory. And it will return to with the victory and will return the trip next year. So right now, uh, coaching staff's on the, on the field, keeping the players separated, not even having a handshake, just sending them on to the locker rooms. So I guess they won't do it. They weren't going to do it. But uh, Shawan needs to act like they've been here before. But you know what? Maybe they've never been here before. Maybe they've not been in this situation. Three and seven two years ago when they played. Three and seven. And then, you know, right now, the last two weeks, they've traveled to the mountains played South Atlanta Conference teams and come away with overtime victories. Uh, they are uh, taunting the Pioneers. This is, this is classless. As a matter of fact, 
just get on the bus and get out. So classless. And you have one guy. You're happy. I get it. You're happy. Right. But Celebrate. Well, whenever you got a guy laying in the middle of the center logo acting like he's swimming laps or something. Yeah, and Abdul Wahid had a huge game. But get him off the field. Go celebrate somewhere. Go celebrate. Don't don't sit here and, and, and do what you're doing out here. That's just it's embarrassing yourself and your school. Glad you're happy. Celebrate. Chest bumps, high fives. But uh, when you're taunting and you're indicating things, and I, I know we're the home team, but still. And we've just lost, but still. That's classless. 46 to 38. Shawan knocking off the Tenskillum Pioneers that took two overtimes. So our Pioneer post game will be on the way. We'll have a look at your complete look at stats, um, a scoring plays all along the way. So stay here for that. And Pioneer coach Jerry Odom. An excited coaching staff, no question about that, for Shawan as they open up the year 2-0 and oh, as they knock off the Pioneers by your final score, 46-38. Stay tuned for our Pioneer post game here on the Pioneer Sports Network. 